me? Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Just when you thought there was nothing left for you to do with your night, the Revolver Podcast, Mama Hot Flash, crew is hot, always doing you right, with a fresh take on gaming weekly, PCs, consoles, and handhelds, mm-hmm. bump what you heard since birth on this earth, we know that the future belongs to the nerds, Revolver Live, what you say? Revolver Live, every Sunday at 6, bringing that gaming magic to your life, doing it live on Twitch, to show that you don't want to miss, be sure to subscribe, crack yourself a brew, if it work on you who now you can join the crew for the ride. Xbox, mobile, and Topics around the nation to gaming rigs, headsets, hardware, and PlayStation. Shout out to Joe. Can't you see him glow? Token brother brought the flow. Now it's time for the show. Let's go. go, go. What's going on, guys? Welcome to Revolver Live, the gaming podcast that says forget the past, the future belongs to the nerds. I'm the Beastly Gamer, and I'm back. Welcome to episode 28 of Revolver Live. Today, we're joined by the best co- co-host in the world, and I'll start I'll start on the left. Mr. You Wilson, how you feeling this week? You're banning us? Huh? <laughs> Wilson! Is he talking about us? <laughs> I well, don't know. <laughs> I watched last week's show, and uh, I got to say, the best host ever. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate the way you guys symbolized me on last week's episode, the squirrel entrenched in a uh, suit of armor, and that armor <laughs> would have deflected any pellet that I had. So it meant a lot to me to see that. Thank you all so much. It was a very beautiful show. You guys did an awesome job. But we got some fun times ahead well, of us. thanks for not showing today. up. Not a problem, my friend. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, Appreciate it was it. it was it was Super Bowl Sunday, and I was having a great time, and oh, I had yeah. a, a hell of a lot of fun. And uh, now I'm back, so Super Bowl is over. Mr. Wilson, I like to say that because I'm a big fan of the old school Dennis to Menace. How mm. you feeling this week? I'm feeling great, man. Um, although another reference you can use is Wilson from Home Improvement. You know, he does the whole oh, yeah. you can only see what well, is about that much of him. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, right. No, I've been good, man. Um, been really busy at the studio, pumping out lots of orders. Got some custom work um, orders to do. Been playing lots of Destiny 2 PvP. Pretty pumped about some of the upcoming changes. Hopefully, they don't bomb. Um, I got my um, first uh, prestige raid done last night. Um, went over to WTF Game Nation's chat. Ended up entering the raffle and winning, and it was awesome. It was a great time. Um, Woo! We got through it pretty quick. It was like hour, hour and a half it took. Nice. We had three people who hadn't done it before, so it was pretty epic, man. I got a full set masterwork. I got the masterwork sniper for PvP. Pretty pumped about that. So I just got yeah, that man. this week myself. I did a I did a raid as well. I did it yesterday, but I didn't do the prestige raid. I did the regular raid, but uh that weapon was for sale this week. Uh if you did do the raid, you could buy it. And uh, I'm looking forward to trying it out. Yeah, it's it's great. I like the um, I like that one and the the new monarchy one, the Maxim. Those are my two favorite. They seem to be the closest thing to a D one sniper right now. So, yeah. well, holy hell, it sounds like it's time for me to to boot up Destiny two again. We'll, yeah, we'll get into that later. Yeah, we'll <laughs> we'll decide that later. No, no really exciting. You know, thank God for games like Destiny two though, where all your your saved data stays in the cloud because. I sent my PS4 Pro back to Sony in uh, Laredo, Texas, and uh, because my front USB port had stopped working, and, and the Pro has three ports. Already, didn't you? I think I told you guys on Twitter. Oh, I was not here last week. And uh, anyway, I heard it was... in your video this week, it was actually a pretty good video. Yeah, yeah. Was well, it the video? Of... Is that where I heard it? Yeah, yeah. I, I talked oh. about it during during one of my videos, but um. Yeah, they sent my my pro back and they completely wiped it. They wiped every game and all my saves, and I was incredibly fucking agitated by this. You know, you can but save yeah. your games to the cloud, right, on PlayStation? Yeah, this is the same thing that the guy told me uh, from customer service. He said, "Sir, you can go and download from the cloud." I said, uh, "Well, I game share with my wife, therefore she's on the the primary system, and the secondary doesn't allow you to do that." He said, "Oh, sir, I'm so sorry." Oh, it's I said, not a count. God- Damn oh, it. because it's a it's account based, but it's based on the PSN account, Primar- not the the, pri- the primary account. Oh, that I mean, sucks. Tell yeah. me, tell I mean, me about it. <laughs> I lost a little bit of everything. You, man. It's you just got to say you played yourself. Yeah, basically, <laughs> that's, that's more than three words. Goddamn, bro. Right? <laughs> start backing oh, everything shit. up manually, man. Well, well, well. Thanks for stepping in here, Mr. Gary Diaz. How you been doing this week, man? 
I've been doing good. I'm, I'm liking the facial hair, man. You make me want to channing all over your Tatum there. Look at it. It's beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. I, man, you know, I, I'm, I'm a baby version of Briar, man. It's coming. It's coming. It's going to look nice by May. Yeah, Briar got that real shit going. You know, Briar has that Samson goatee. If he cuts I mean, it off, he'll be as strong increased. as a 10-year-old boy. Briar's got a Definitely. fucking warrior's beard, man. Yeah, like, just yeah, he sure big does. old war axe. Like, <laughs> if, if he was ever a video game character, he'd be like, Holding an axe or like Torbjorn. Yeah. I mean, I, I like it. I mean, we were already just oozing testosterone, but you've added, a, you know, an infinite number to our sperm count collectively with that beard. So, well, yeah, it's I, been a... I think I think with, with your hoodie, it's probably right at the bare minimum at this point. The testosterone was overridden by the hoodie. Well, uh, I feel like I'm just pumping estrogen onto the screen at the moment. You, just, you know, just... You're well, spilling he, it. <laughs> he asked us before the show, he's like, do I look like E.T.? And... Uh, and Beasley said it looks like you took your sister's hoodie but (laughs) Uncrasmatic called it out why does Gary look like Elliot from (laughs) E.T. Director also said I look like the guy begging for change outside his Taco Bell Um, as always Gary you look lovely today my friend it's great to see you and last but not least Mr. Briar Rabbit how are you feeling, sir? Other than that big swinging dick of a beard, how are you feeling this week? I'm doing great, man. I've been having a lot of fun this week uh, playing some Destiny. We were playing a little bit of PUBG right before the show started. I'm going to be honest with you. We played about two or three hours of PUBG. I didn't want it to end. I, I like that game. As soon as I start playing it, man, it sinks my – it's hooks right into me. Like the all or nothing nature of that game is just so fun to me. We meet yeah, up a half I, hour before the show every Sunday, and I think we met up uh, five minutes late this time. That's about how to the <laughs> wire we pushed it for our guys. One more jump. It was, it was a very strange circumstance. Normally, I come in about five minutes after you guys, and I got here today on time, and I looked in, inside of our, our window where we meet up, and there was no one there. And I was like, oh, is, is today Sunday? And so I sent Briar an invite. I was like, what the hell is happening? But I'm very, very happy to see you You wouldn't know it if you were at our Twitter DMs. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> you would have known exactly what was happening. <laughs> Gerald, uh, uh, Gerald of, of Rivera told me to not fuck with Twitter today and follow him around and, and save ass and smash ass. And I've been having a hell of a lot of uh, fun playing The Witcher 3. As you guys know, I'm about 80 hours in now. And uh, it's it's a very special thing. Man, I'm only level 21. And I mean, I've been Jeez. doing everything. I, yeah, I, How? I'm trying to. Uh, that game, I'm, you I'm level trying up to complete, slow in that game. Yeah, I mean, I'm doing every mission. I'm doing every um, uh, where, where you go and find like the uh, Witcher gear. I'm doing all that stuff. Side mes- side missions. I'm not doing the primaries. I'm doing everything that I can do until I have to do story missions. That's what I, I was doing. Basically, I didn't want the game to end, so I just like I basically stopped <laughs> yeah. doing the main quest and just focused on every little question mark, every you know hunt, monster hunt, yeah. everything. I just yeah, didn't that, want it to a, end. That's exactly what. And Plus, if you sit there and listen to all the dialogue, I mean, there's probably 40 yeah. hours of dialogue in that. You got yeah. that right. My God. Sometimes I, I think I finished you know, that game with all the DLC still in the 20s. I didn't. I don't think I ever hit the 30s. As far as really? that goes, I don't think I did. Mm. I'd have to look again. But well, wow. I think you'll uh, go back and visit Witcher 2. I know Witcher One's a bit of a slog now, but Witcher 2 is still very playable. We'll see. That's what I've heard. You know. Whenever I, whenever I think about it, I own both games. I own Witcher One and Witcher Two on uh, PC. Yeah. But like, whenever I think about it, I'm like, you know, there's so many new games I should be playing too. It's hard to go back for me, just time wise. So it's, it sounds like you guys have kind of stepped. I bought it, still haven't played it. Monster Hunter, you guys not playing that anymore? No, I'm, because it sounds like you guys have been playing PUBG and Destiny. Is Monster I Hunter kind of fizzling out? I'm playing Monster Hunter. It's my bedtime game because obviously I, I play it in bed. I'm about. 60 hours into monster hunter it's just come for food for me oh wow okay well that's very great to hear i guess uh when everybody wants to get back into it and maybe 200 hours from now when i'm done with the witcher we can go in there and fuck around a little bit for the people who are new to the show revolver live is a gaming podcast with six revolving topics you can be a part of the show by submitting your topics for consideration at revolvergamescast at gmail.com. That's revolvergamescast at gmail.com. We go live every Sunday at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv forward slash briarrabbit. 
That's twitch.tv forward slash Briar Rabbit. The video is then shared on YouTube at Briar Rabbit's channel and my channel, Beastly Gamer. If you're, una- if you're unable to see the live feed or any of the video formats, check us out in podcast form on Podbean, iTunes, or your favorite podcast service provider. And Gary would like to actually talk a little bit about that now. I would. I would. You guys have blown us away with support for the audio version of this. So we know that at least 50% of you guys right now are listening to this and not watching us. Um, as much as that irritates me because you're missing out on this beautiful group of men um i'm also humbled that you guys would take time out to follow us and subscribe like share whatever the hell you're doing to pump that number what i would ask is um you know we we do get a lot of people on apple podcasts that watch us but if you do or listen to us i should say please head on over to revolver live um podbean which we link on the video and chuck us a follow on there um, if you want to make a second account and follow us again, um, <laughs> each one will be just as important as the last. Game in the um, system. Exactly. The system. I mean, if you've got nothing to do, three, four, five accounts, you know, who's, who's to say? <laughs> Gmails are free. Keep making them. Um, we're making close podcast to... Smurf accounts like it's Overwatch. Exactly. We're close to 200 <laughs> followers. Um, and we seem to have crazy amounts of downloads for those. So I know you guys are supporting the hell out of us. But if we could hit 200, uh, it would make me the happiest hobo outside Taco Bell. Um, so <laughs> if you can do that for us this week, I would be most, most appreciative. If you're listening In- on uh, iTunes or uh, Google Play, too, give us a rating. Give us a five-star rating. It really helps us out. We would really appreciate it. That does, too. I didn't want to be do, greedy. Do we- I was going to try to pimp that next week. Honestly, guys, do we deserve anything less than five? I mean, five seems like the the bare minimum we should get for a podcast of this. I mean, if the scale is one to 20, I would agree with you. (laughs) (laughs) The the math checks out. Really? (laughs) You know what? If you agree, Wilson, I agree, damn it. All right. So we got a hell of a show for you guys. Before we get started with that, Mr. Diaz, would you like to uh, give a word to our sponsors? I will. I'm not going to do the full ad read this week um, because, ladies and gentlemen, there is a new ad read in development. It's going to be bigger, badder, and more penile than the next. It's going to be girthier than the the current one. Is It's going to be veiny and throbbing. That's how powerful (laughs) this ad read is going to be. Sounds good to me. I know. It's going to scare your mother. I'll prepare myself. exactly what I want to get on Sunday night. (laughs) Exactly. I mean, we all want more of that in our lives. Um, but yeah, we are sponsored by bagofdicks.com. Um, it is a website, a real website. You can head on over to bagofdicks.com uh, and put in any address you want. And for a mere $10, send them a bag of dicks. Crazy. A and real you'd be bag surprised of dicks. That they would put them in their mouth too. It's crazy how that works. You know what's yeah. fun is that you could send this to a friend, an enemy. It doesn't matter who you send to it, it's always appropriate. Your friend yeah. opens this up and he's gonna laugh hysterically. Your enemy opens it up, he's gonna be like, "Who sent me a fucking bag of dicks?" As matter. they start, <laughs> and, and the them. good part is, your enemies will become frenemies after they get the, the bag yeah. of dicks. So it works really, really well. The dicks well. will be anonymously packaged and discreetly packaged, so the person won't know who it's come from or what it is until they open it. Um, and using code Revolver Live, that's one word, Revolver Live, will save you twenty percent. So head on over to Bag of Dicks, um, send them to anyone as Briar said and save yourself 20% revolve alive um, and stay tuned next week for the brand new throbbing ad read which will be <laughs> premiering next week I'm so excited Gary uh, you know what you have a magic you have a wave of words that's very hard to uh, to put into words so I'll just I can't wait I'm so excited on the edge of my seat waiting to hear this new ad read every time you read the old one it's like Christmas so the it next makes one being... me moist to think about. I am yeah. excited. Oh, that word moist. That's so dirty. So me and my buddy is. Will were talking about that. We're like, it's, it's such a dirty descriptive word, moist. But but Betty Crocker uses it on every box of cake mix. Isn't that crazy? Moist cake it's, mix. It's effective. Yeah. I, I never got you know turned on by the cake. It tastes pretty good, though. We got some <laughs> really... Really great topics this week. Uh, mine were actually submitted by Kate, uh, my my lady who's watching us in the living room. I love that and, idea, uh, Beasley. It's doing like a all a whole show just of topics submitted by our significant others. Yeah, it is a hilarious idea for a show. 
because they can plan it and fuck us up royally. <laughs> and I'm sure that they would because we know how these women are. All right. Yeah. So we'll plan that out. And that'll be I worry about show. the savagery level of Gary's wife. I'm still <laughs> trying to figure it out. Yeah. She just corrupt her. To, what if she corrupted him? She yeah, just would that. not participate. She, I would ask her. She would just literally raise her eyes to sort of meet mine in a piercing glance for a couple of seconds and then look down again and just wait for me to leave the room. <laughs> so that's pretty much how most exchanges go with me and her. She's still mad at you about that pizza you ate and threw it back in her face by sending her pictures of it when it was done. Yeah. That was a good pizza. Some, I still, I still, you remember that conversation you showed us on Twitter? She's like, he's like, I'm going to eat this pizza, pizza. And she's like, you better not. And he sent her a picture of it be done be in the sure. oven. <laughs> I what the hell I like added it with like... Something like eating your pizza, bitch. That was it. That was the yeah. end. Of thing, yeah. That was that was not my finest point, to be fair. I don't know how you get away with it. He does. I did. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> it was worth it, though. So the the first topic is really interesting because it's something I want to know because I've been kind of I've, I've put some distance between myself and this game over the last, you know, four to six weeks. And uh I heard a lot, Briar, you actually created a video on this topic because there's some changes coming to this particular game. And the topic is, is it cool to look like Destiny 2 again? And I want to I want to be like the cool kids. I'm an old man. You know, my kids are cool kids, but I want to be a cool kid again. So whose topic is this, first of all? And what is the answer to this amazing question? It's a uh, collective it's actually kind topic. of a joint topic between me and Gary. Okay. Um, but why don't you go ahead and talk about if it's cool or not right now, Gary, because I have a few points to make if... Uh... Well, I mean, I'm going to ramble incoherently and then let Briar and yourself come in with the facts and the data. But for me, um, I feel like I, I've been watching Destiny from afar, um, kind of like uh, a lover with a restraining order. Um, and that's kind of been my my distance to the game. You know, I approach it when I can and, and when it's had enough of me, it wards me off. Um, I hope one day to be embraced by it again. Um, but but not not this day. But the TWAB this week was the first time I have seen Destiny 2 or Bungie um, give me confidence that they understand the direction that they need to be taking the game to fix it and rectify it. So there's been a lot of good TWABs lately. Um, you know, we've been through them. Briar's spoken about them at length on the DCP, um, the other podcast that he does. And, you know, it, we, we've dissected them down, but I've always felt that they were reactive and they're like, well, this is what the community wants. This is what you guys have been asking us to do. Yes, we're doing it. This is the roadmap. It's the first time I've seen Bungie be proactive and look at where the where the game's deficient and where they think they can improve upon the game and, and do something that we've not actually asked for, but I think will be interesting and create the replayability they want. And the one part I want us to discuss, and then I guess we can expand on, is the um, challenge cards, is it, that you can add to Nightfalls um, to, you know, to, to give you score multipliers. This, to me, feels like almost an infinite difficulty scaler. So, you know, in Destiny, it's very difficult to make content that is infinitely replayable and infinitely difficult. But if you create challenges where you have to hit a certain score, and then the only way to do that is to make the game more difficult for you, and then by reaching that score, maybe you unlock uh, abilities or mods or things that then let you hit that next tier of difficulty and move up. I don't know. I feel like they're building a game which is much more catered to the long tail grind. I mean, what do you guys think? I, I would agree with that uh, about the Nightfall. But back to like, is Destiny is is enjoying Destiny cool? I I don't, I don't know about that. It's not cool by any means, right? Right. If you go on Twitter right now, if you watch YouTube videos, definitely the. The people who are getting the most views, the people who are getting the most interaction are the people who are hating, right? It's it's always kind of that way, right? It's always more fun to throw shade because, you know, you can make a comedic, you know, value out of it. It's 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 somehow it's it's more entertaining to watch somebody hate on something than somebody who's really supportive about something, right? It's like it's hard to be as entertaining when you're when you're really complimentary, if that makes sense. Like a oh, totally um but I will say that over the last four weeks or so, a lot of my biggest concerns about Bungie as a company have really started to be alleviated. Where, whereas when I was watching them in November and December of 2017, what I was watching was a company that uh, didn't seem to really get the fact that why they were making their fans upset. Um, 
with the with the way the Eververse was designed and where the game kind of had all these. I think I said in my video like blinking red arrows, like pointing at the Eververse store from every direction. When I look at the way they're talking now, and they're they're being much more communicative than they had been in the past. And when I look at the changes that they've made to recent events, like uh, the upcoming Crimson Days event and the uh, Iron Banner event that we just had, uh, they're much more friendly events. They have much more uh, gear and loot in them uh, that you can earn as opposed to buy. Uh, and in the the way they're talking about the future of the game. And keeping the game fun as opposed to keeping to the original vision, these things really get me excited for the future of Destiny 2 and have alleviated some of the anger I had for, for Bungie themselves. Absolutely. I think that's pretty well said because, like, you guys know me. I've defended this game since the start. Like, people, a lot of these people saw these problems right off the bat. I wasn't one of those people. You know what I mean? I was kind of thinking to myself, well... You know, I haven't really reached the true end game yet. Let's wait till we get there. Wait till we get there. And after character three of doing every bit of content, I kind of started to realize, you know, the lack of the end game. And it instantly became, I'm going to have fun with the experiences that I can in Crucible because that's replayable content, in my opinion. And you kind of get a new experience each time, depending. And I moved back over to console because of the player base on PC. And I met up with some old friends and we've just been having an absolute blast in the crucible, man. Just teaming up, having fun. Get, you know, we were getting our Legend of Acrius shotgun and stuff like that, being super toxic as much as we can with the Acrius and just having a great time and knowing that like good changes are coming. I mean, in a nutshell, we've got I'd say compared to the other updates, a, a pretty mediocre one coming in February. That's kind of, eh. and then the one in March is going to have like ability class ability and weapon balance, exotic tuning, um, uh, crucible sandbox changes. There's going to be a lot of really cool stuff that's coming in March at the end of March. And that one's on my birthday. So I'm pretty stoked about that. But where I think you nailed, nailed it on the head when you said that they're kind of starting to, win back a little bit of my trust like we'll see how they implement it and if they can deliver the way there's still some more details we need to know i don't want to just hear crucible sandbox changes i'm assuming once we get closer to that we'll know hopefully exactly what all those changes are and i'm hoping that it's a very lengthy spreadsheet of changes uh I, I got a quick question, and it's not nearly as deep as the, the information you guys laid out, but uh, the Eververse is a, a big issue with Destiny 2. And mm, yes. Briar, Briar, you mentioned that uh, you know now there are certain things that you can win actually in events versus you know buying them. Have any of the items from the Eververse become available in other aspects of the game, or do you still have to go to the Eververse to get them? So the types of items that used to be solely locked to Eververse – have now begun showing up as earnable items in game, like exotic ghosts, exotic sparrows, uh, that kind of thing. So there's ships. Um, when the game launched, ships, sparrows, ghosts, completely locked behind the Eververse Trading Company. Uh, now, within the last month or so, these things have started showing up as rewards for Iron Banner. Uh, there'll be the rewards for Crimson Days. They added new rewards, like an a exotic ghost to the raid. Um, so, like, in Destiny 1, when you did Vault of Glass, right at the get-go, Vault of Glass, you could drop, you could get a, a Sparrow, the best Sparrow in the game. You could get, um, you, you know, you could get Exotic Weapon, obviously, uh, and you could get a ship, that, and it was the only way to get that ship. So you had to earn these things, and they were badges of honor, as opposed mm -hmm. to buying something and just showing off something that you bought and paid for so uh, to me it's much more meaningful to have something that i earned by doing something really cool like the vault of glass ship showing up in orbit and everybody's like oh damn where'd you get that ship and i can tell them, like you know we beat the vault of glass yeah all right so i mean fr from what it sounds like bungie is listening uh, and, and your confidence is definitely up there are you guys still optimi op optimistic about the future or do you still feel more defensive about what's going on now I feel like I'm more optimistic now than I ever was. I feel like I had no hope whatsoever going into... I'm cautiously optimistic. ...end of last year. Um, I mean, there's some talking chat as well around um, Monster Hunter World being maybe a, a, a catalyst 
for Bungie to realize that their um, they, their community is not as sticky as they thought it might be, and that their player base could transition very quickly if there was another game that scratched that itch. Um, I think that's probably not the sole reason that we're seeing more communication from Bungie, but I think it has to have a little bit of a fire under their backsides to say, really? well, you know, you've, you've got lots of games on the horizon this year that we don't even know about that could fit that looter shooter or, you know, long, long tail game as a service um, tag. And, you know, if, if Monster Hunter, which is effectively not really a game as service, it's just a grindy game. One of the first ones we've had for a long time has dragged so much of the Destiny community away. Then what would a game like Borderlands 3 do if it was announced oh. this year? Great you know, point. So, you had to drop Borderlands 3. I was just yeah, going to say, that's, hey, there's that's... no way another game's going to come out this year that we don't know about that's a first-person looter shooter. <laughs> you had to say Borderlands 3. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've got Anthem so starting next year. and uh, I don't think Anthem's really... going to do it, man. I think that game's going to tank so fucking hard, and I think yeah. that's Ooh, way too really? early to predict that. But I think oh, that yeah. game, if you're going to go into a third-person game looking for it to satiate your appetite from Destiny... Ain't gonna happen, dude. And I'll tell you why. Because it's a third person game. I don't like third person games as much as I like first person games. Like no doubt about it. Especially in PvP. And I don't even know if Anthem's planning on having PvP. But if it doesn't, then that's another reason it won't be as good as Destiny to, to me. Yeah. I mean, we've not we've not spoken about it at all, and I think it's maybe another topic to come up. But Halo Six, there's rumblings of Halo Six this Ooh. year. Ooh. And Halo Man. Six could get it right. I mean, Halo Five's massively changed what they put out, and the PvP is yeah. huge. Yeah, now. like it's a I great. I enjoyed game. Halo Five. I got it when it released, and I had a blast. I thought that was really cool. The uh, the aspect where you'd load into a PvP match, and there'd be uh, PVE enemies, and it would be like an objective for bonus points. So there was a reason to go after those enemies instead of just avoid them and do I the mean, PvP. Microsoft's got to be looking at what's hot in games and games as a service and. You know, Halo is one of their biggest franchise. People love the franchise. No reason that couldn't have a an element of loot to grind or equipment yeah. to grind. For, you know, for no. me, just off the games you guys just mentioned, the only one to me that honestly I feel could do it would be Borderlands 3. You know, Anthem yeah. is going to be, I think it's going to, you know, carve out its own niche. Uh, and, of course, uh, Halo is a, an exclusive to the Xbox community. But Anthem being a... a, a kind of a multi experience would be fun but like you guys said first person versus third i really don't think a third person in my opinion would would be able to compete but i don't see any of those games being like a destiny killer right i but think all borderlands of them have could. potential i see i i don't think so i think all of them have potential to take a certain portion of the destiny community and grab their attention possibly long term borderlands they don't do pvp they just don't do it right i don't really see that changing in Borderlands 3. I mean, if they want to keep the flavor that is Borderlands with its over-the-top weapons and very few hit-scan weapons, that's not great for PvP. But they could definitely siphon off a lot of the PvE community. Same Ooh, with Anthem. Hey, all hey, of them. Like yeah. Gary says, Halo could definitely siphon off a significant portion of the PvP community. I think Fortnite already has. So, like, it's. I don't think there's going to be this one game that drops that just every Destiny player is like, oh, that's better, I'm going there. I think it's going to be, you know, a chunk from here, a chunk from there, a chunk from here. And if if Destiny fans are still as unhappy as they have been for the last six months, it's going to be a pretty easy process for these games to come in. Yeah. Well, I think Justin said it best in chat. Destiny's killer is itself. And I've said it for years, man. The only thing that can kill <laughs> Destiny is Destiny, dude. And it's, it's sad, but it's true. But, like, I... <laughs> I'm cautiously optimistic about these changes coming. I want them to be some of the the greatest changes that this game needs. And I hate to say it, but to revert it closer to the experience that we had in Destiny 1, at least for PV, uh, at least for PvP, and then give more more people stuff to grind for in PvE. That's like with the uh nightfall specific loot that's coming out. That's gonna be awesome. That means I'm gonna be doing my nightfall more than three times a week going after that loot. Right. Isn't that cool? You know, like, yeah, that's awesome. Like, it's it's going to be cool. Hey, man, it's just Nightfall this week. Let's grind the shit out of it on this character and get the armor. Let's grind it down on the next one and get the armor. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I hope they we have did that stuff all the time. Malik, you know, like, I hope they yeah. have that weapon that everybody's like, oh, God damn, I need mm -hmm. this. Now we have to grind this for the entire day. 
Yeah, and like I, I can rec- you bring up grass and Malik. That's a perfect example. I remember grinding the shit out of that with you on stream. We were having drinks. We were pretty tipsy by the end of the stream too. Fucking a. <laughs> yeah, dude, it was a good time, man. There's just so much shit on the floor. I remember there were so many engrams and stuff that we couldn't pick up anymore. And as boring as that sounds, killing Omnigul over and over again you eventually just get into autopilot mode and it's just hanging out with friends, like talking yeah. shit, you know what I mean? And it's, it's a really good time. And same thing with the uh, Archon's forge. I remember we spent like five hours in there one night and like, we took a picture or something on Twitter and we were like, feel sorry for the guy that's got to clean that up. Like there was, just... <laughs> what were we looking for? Was it the sniper rifle? I think it was the sniper rifle. Or the but not rifle. forgotten and salad. And then, at that point, we might have even been looking just for some overall light level upgrades Could at that be. point. Right. Yeah, but because that was right when we started getting access to it. What were you guys yeah. drinking? Beer. That's the best Whatever question. had alcohol beer. in it. <laughs> oh, beer, guys. <laughs> Whatever had alcohol in it. But uh, no, like I miss that stuff and I'm hoping that there's more of it coming. But like the cautious side of me is like, you know, I've said it a long time. I want to see these guys make take big chances and not tiptoe around the solution. I want them to just flood it, flood it with fun, make the crucible. I mean, I'm not saying break the shit out of it to where it's not fun, but like some things need to be broken to make it interesting from time to time. And you can change well, I, it. You can know it's broken and change it and make well, something else broken and freshen up the crucible. I understand where um, you're coming from, but but they kind of made big changes and step back in big ways. And that's really what got a lot of the community upset. So the fact that they're tiptoeing around, they're tiptoeing in the right direction They're they do one thing, they're judging how people are reacting to it. And now they can take another step toward that direction. So I think it'll probably take a little bit more time, but I think that the way they're doing it now is probably best for the consumer, best for the people who have had issues and grievances with the game in general, because if they jump and make a big change, you could put them right back where they were. It could, but like, it doesn't, like, I I say make a big change as far as, like, number values, like, damage values and crucible. These are all things that could be tweaked very, these are all just number values, you know? Maybe the number value for a grenade is 10. Let's bump it up to 12 or whatever. Or give it back to us sooner. Keep it the same, but give it back to us sooner. We want these MVP plays, you know what I mean? Like, we want to see people have those hero moments that... 3v1 hey guys don't stress i got this i got my thousand yards you know or like i'm a firm believer too that like we as the players are are to blame for a lot of these changes oh we want more primary gunfights we'll have two primaries now i'm not going to say that there's not some sort of a disconnect between what we wanted and what they thought we wanted and what we got because there definitely was but we want more primaries have two People spam grenades too much. Now you barely get any. I'm tired of getting killed by overpowered supers. Now just hit them with energy weapons and they die as quickly as if they're not in a super. I'm tired of getting sniped all the time. I'm tired of shotguns. Make them power weapons. Barely give them any of them. You know, we wanted this stuff, but we didn't, in my opinion, do a good good enough job of explaining why we wanted this stuff. We just told them what we wanted and then they made up their own mind of this is what they want. We're going to put it in the second game and we're going to try to make it a more balanced experience and it backfired. That's a big change. But But. I also feel like with some tweaks, I feel like PVP is actually is what I like. I like I do like the the primary gunfights. I do too. I do like the fact that, yeah, you can get a sniper, you can get a shotgun, but you can't spend the whole game running around with it. I do like that. I, I do want a faster time to kill because I think it would make for more hero plays and stuff like that. Uh, and, like, you could actually kill two people when he just, like, ran up on them. Right. Um, yeah. But I do like I do like the balance, right? Is I, I feel like there's this conversation right now that balance is boring. I see it in chat right now. Balance is boring. All throughout Destiny 1's life, I wanted more balance, right? I, I wanted the... We have this amazing game where we have all these fucking weapons and throughout destiny one's lifetime it was like there's two of them that were that were good in the crucible at any point in time right now you can go into the crucible at least on pc this is where i most of my experience comes from and i think it's different on ps4 and xbox but on pc i can get in there with an auto rifle i can get in there with a scout rifle i can get in there with a hand cannon i can get in there with a machine gun i can get in there with just about any weapon i think the pulse well, the darkest before, I think, is a great pulse rifle, actually. So mm. I don't think there's a weapon type that I can't go into the Crucible with and not have fun with. I mean, 
your personal preferences may may vary, but I don't think it's a balanced issue. I think it's a fun yeah. issue. Yeah, I, I think, I, I think, I think to, you make a good point. A good yeah, point. I think you're onto something there. I mean, my take on it is that you need to – well, Wilson's probably in a better position to say it. I think you need to spend more time on console um, playing Destiny because I feel like the lion's share of the players are on console. If you add up Xbox and PlayStation, they're probably 90% of the PvP community. I mean, in Trials, it is 90% of the people that play Trials are on console. And from everything that I've seen watching streams, and I have not played console since the PC launch, so I, I'm part of the problem. Everything that I've seen on streams, the console looks awful. Like the, the meta, the sandbox, everything about console PvP to me looks boring. And yeah. it's everything that I disliked about console pvp you know mida laning uriel's laning last hope spamming up close like really you know and the fact that it is just pure team shot like it's people shooting down lanes with you don't see that on pc and without you know blowing my own trumpet you guys have played with me enough that i will frequently have games where i'll be in you know the the kd will be in the teens the 20s frequently like game after game after game I don't play with my team. You, you, you guys never see me. Like I'm constantly around, doing my own thing, having gunfights, and I feel like I can. T I personally play with hand cannons, but I feel like I can take a pulse hand cannon, auto, in on PC. I imagine I probably couldn't do the same on console, and that's where the disconnect is. Um, that the majority of the players can. are having the worst experience. You can. It's just that people know what's effective. You know what I mean. So kind of to get back to Briar's point of I don't think balance is boring. Um, I think it'd be cool. I think a good place to start and where they are starting is that they're going to give us more power. I think that's a good place to start. I think shotguns are in a fantastic spot already. Fusions feel really good. Snipers, mm -hmm. the flinch is completely fucked on them, but yeah, I still have fun with it anyway. But, um, I mean, you should feel powerful with it if it's a powerful weapon. I want to keep the double primary system. I just want to see more power ammo maybe make it to where if you're next to your friend and he pulls it you get half as much or something i don't know maybe just as much i don't know i want to see more changes with that but i think you I, make the, a very the thing that scares me though wilson is that i don't want to see it in a spot where i load into a trials of Osiris match and i walk around a corner and there's four fucking snipers just staring at that corner right <laughs> it, that was that was a fucking boring meta to me i, I know a lot of people who were high skill with snipers found it fun, but for me, it just felt like I couldn't fucking move on like any any part of the map that had a sniper lane. Like I couldn't go anywhere right. near it, and it just right. it, it was really boring to me. I think you could put safeguards in, like not being able to res snipe. You know that sucks. That's frustrating. As fun as it was, oh, let me tell you, it was fun baiting people out and setting the <laughs> timer back another I mean, seven seconds. I'm, just I'm just padding that so super, but. I think you make a good point, Briar. Maybe map design has a lot to do with that because there would be some really nightmarish maps in a sniper meta there on some of those maps. But I think Gary made a really good point about the difference between PC and console. And I don't know how you guys feel about this, but do you guys feel that they need to start balancing these sandboxes separately? Because uh, yes. Gary had a really good conversation about three-tap hand cannons um, on PC versus... Uh, or just in general with the uh, different rate of fire hand cannons. And if you make one three tap, he was kind of breaking it down, how others would be useless and how it would just encourage, what was it? The 150. Well, the one, the, the better devils would be the only hand cannon that got you. If you made that a three tap, why would you use the, the quicker one? That's a three, but I guess it, unless the quicker one was also a three tap, then why would you use the better devils so that discounts that? And then the slow hand cannons, they're currently a three tap. So unless you make them a two tap, they're garbage now. So that completely breaks everything there. And also four tap hand cannons on PC don't feel slow. On no, console, they they're inaccurate. You usually five tap. You rarely four tap. Um, on PC, you rarely five tap. You always four tap unless you're a bad aim. Um, it, again, it's I'm, we've spent a long time talking about Destiny. Now. I'd like to get BC in on the conversation, but it's, uh, all I'll say is that from my own selfish requirements... I'd say again that we who are enjoying the game are probably in the minority of players and for the greater good, we're probably going to end up with a lesser version of destiny, but then the majority of people will probably have a better version. I of think destiny, the real least. problem is that the piece the, the console version of destiny isn't very good. I it's think not, they fucked but, up. Like I, yeah. I straight up, I think they fucked it up as it doesn't feel nearly like just 
aiming a gun and shooting a gun doesn't feel as good in Destiny 2 on a PlayStation as it does uh, on PC with a controller, right? It's like, we know yeah. that because we've played both. Also, it doesn't feel as good as Destiny 1. Like, hand cannons yeah. are... I, I never see anybody using a hand cannon on PlayStation. Like, I just don't see it. No. Can't. You were asking me when it's I was streaming. So hard to do. Yeah. Briar was like, does anyone use a hand cannon on console? And I was like, I know, dude. This is like... I wasn't asking shit. you You're... like I wasn't asking you like to make fun of anything. I was just curious because I hadn't played yeah. I hadn't played on PlayStation it's in rare. months. So I was just really honestly curious. And you just don't see it. Like it, it's not no. out there. It's a it's not as good a game as it is on PC. So like when I'm out there having a blast on PC and then I watch gameplay on PS4, I'm like, this the the characters appear to move slower. Yep. The aiming feels worse. Like the guns aren't as accurate, and everybody is literally just holding dicks and and aiming down lanes with with Mida or with Uriels. It's like it's all I see. I, yep. I got a question for you guys, and maybe you guys can delve deep and, and tell me why you think it is the case. But I'm looking at VG charts, um, and, and I'm looking at the sales of Destiny Two on PC versus the consoles. And it's very, very low, and it's disturbingly low for me. I would have thought that they would have done extremely well on PC. What is the reason that this game didn't sell on PC? Because it came out on console only first, and a lot of people have friends who have been console gamers their whole life. They met their friends on console. They established their clan on console, and they want to stay where the majority of the, their friends are. And especially in Destiny 2, that's probably the most important it's ever been right now because of the clan yeah. grams. You know what I mean? That you get the clan engrams. Just for people who are listening, 270,000 total sales on PC total. And 5.9 million total sales on PS4 alone. So that's just astronomical. I would have never thought that. I would have thought that it would have sold more than that. But you have a great point. You know, I... The stuff that I've built and, and the characters that I've built, I wouldn't want to start over again and leave them behind. It's, you know, you're clashing between two different worlds, and unless you're willing to 100% go all in for one, it's hard to let the other one go. Yeah, PC it's, PC also launched right at the moment where the the Destiny community was getting the most mad too. You know, like oh yeah, yeah, a month after, really, yeah, it really became apparent that there was no end game that this this game was not developed for fans of destiny but for you know brand new players brand new much more casual players and then you know like the whole the whole life cycle or the whole cycle of like pc launch to christmas was just filled with fucking toxicity and i i, I put it out there too i mean i i was fucking mad about what they were doing to, to the game i love i was fucking mad yeah i could tell I was there. <laughs> I've made, I, I mean, people take it personal when like it goes much further than friends. I mean, I've made people that I consider family. You guys met through destiny, you know, um, a lot of the guys from tower life resolute. I'm extremely close with and have their personal phone numbers. You know what I mean? And when you take the watering hole away from the buffalo herd that likes to, you know, chill there. Mm -hmm. They get a little restless, so to speak. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you can always go play other games. I get it. But like, dude, there's nothing better than you and five other your buddies going in to stomp out a raid or stomp out the crucible or whatever it is that you guys want to do and, and just forget about the bullshit of life for the day. And from the perspective of a PC gamer, predominantly PC gamer, um, PC gamers have higher expectations and less tolerance. I'm speaking gem, gem, like from a generalization, but a good example of that is um, James Duggan on Fireteam Chat, the IGN guy, PC guy. Um, he came into Destiny um, with Destiny 2 being a uh, you know a competitive PC gamer, played it, got his full Trials armor, and said that he is never going to touch the PvP again full stop because of the inconsistencies in it it does, doesn't matter how it plays doesn't matter what it does the game's burnt him it's inconsistent there's disconnects the, the server the networking's bad the lag's bad he'd rather play a game that rewards his skill and ability like rainbow six siege counter-strike or overwatch and that's what he just said and i think a lot of pc players who aren't destiny fans came in tried it played it and went I'll play something where people don't teleport around the screen. We're used to that. Like we've had that. It's kind of, we tolerate it as a part of the game, but yeah, PC gamers who've come in from overwatch and thought, yeah, I'll try destiny. Looked at it and gone. Nah, 
it's never played it again. It's funny wow. that you mentioned that we get used to it because <clears throat> in when I'm streaming, I got a hot key for the X Files music. Anytime somebody does some laggy ass shit and teleports all over the map, so, <laughs> you know, that is fucking brilliant. What was that? You know what I mean? Like, and it, it's perfect. You know, you just fucking laugh it off nowadays. Like, until you're on your seventh game of Trials and yep. <laughs> get a little angry then. How else? Don't, don't think I forgot you. All right. <laughs> Blinking titans don't exist, all right? <laughs> oh, yes, they do. <laughs> it's not in the lore. <laughs> but, I mean, from, from one genre of, or from a game that people dislike to a whole genre of games that people dislike, I think maybe we can move on to our second topic. What do we think? Uh, seems sure. a little early to me. I mean, we only put about 45 I mean, minutes into Destiny. 45 minutes into Destiny? <laughs> well, I don't want to jump the gun is... here. This is a short topic, actually. Um, it's just one that I want to get you guys' takes on, because we've never spoken about this particular topic. But I recently discovered a genre, um, and it does it for me. And I want to know if you guys, uh, you know, if it, if it grinds your gears or if it strokes your pole, which of the two. Um, and that is walking sims. So walking sims, to me, is um, it's a prerogative term. You can call them adventure games, or games where the story and the puzzle is more important than the... Uh, you know, shooting or the element of gameplay itself. So these are games like Firewatch, Vanishing of Ethan Carter, What Remains of Edith Finch, Gone Home, Dear Esther, even Hellblade, which arguably was a walking sim with some combat. Um, you know, you walk forward, you did a fight, you solved a puzzle, you walk forward, you did a fight. Um, this genre gets a lot of flack. People say it's not really a game. It's, you know, it's, it's just a, a puzzle or, a, you know, a walking sim. Um, but it's something that I really like because I find that stories are more poignant um, and I get more out of them. I leave that game and I feel emotionally moved by it or there's something that's happened. Do you guys play them? Do you guys like them? Do you guys not like them? Why? Well, I'll go, I'll go first because mine is kind of short. I've only played two of the games you mentioned. Uh, I beat The Vanishing of Ethan Carter, and I love that game. And it was very slow. Uh, but it was very deep in story, and it had lots of twists and turns. And, and it was kind of like playing through a book. It's something I don't do very often, but I, I did enjoy it. I thought that... Uh, what they tried to achieve and accomplish they had. Would I play those games? Like, would it be like one of my favorite genres? Probably not. I, like you guys, usually like to uh, digest my games, fa you know, in a faster pace. I like to be able to move quickly. I'd like to be able to go where I want to go and, and not basically stroll through the woods. Uh, and of course, Hellblade to me, yeah, it was, it was kind of a slower game, but I didn't even... It didn't even appear that way. It didn't feel like it was a walking simulator. It just seemed like it was the world that they crafted. And now when I think about it, you know, months after beating it, yeah, it kind of was a walking simulator with some combat. But, you know, I guess it all depends on the presentation because uh, there was so much more going on behind the scenes that that aspect of the game was kind of the last thing that I perceived. I think that, you know, it can be done well. I know I, I have Firewatch too, but I haven't played it. Um, it's a great game. Really? It's one of my favorites on that list. Yeah, I, I mean, you don't have the best walking simulator of all time on there. Which one? I can't believe it's not even coming to mind that I even said that it's not on the list. DayZ. It's the greatest walking simulator of ever. It'd take you fucking two hours to find your friend. There's no in game. Oh, I hate that shit. You find a compass, the thing could be fucking broken, or if some asshole a mile away with a Mosin shoots you just in the pocket that your compass is in. You're fucked. <laughs> and if you're anyone like me, you can't get anywhere without MapQuest or fucking Google Maps, dude. And that is not in the this, game. Uh, Wilson, uh, a funny story about uh, Daisy. Kate and I, <laughs> you know, you can't you can't game share that on Steam. You have to actually buy it twice. Right. And so we bought it again for Kate so she could play with me. And then we realized there was no way to know where where each of us were on the map. That was we walked around for about four hours and still didn't find each other. And I think that was the last time we attempted to play together. That was a horrible experience. We'll, yeah, that was. We'll team up. I, I know a guy. All right. He goes by <laughs> Great American Hero. He is the best Daisy navigator. He will tell me. I'll be like, he'll be like, where are you? I'll be like, I see some trees and a picket fence. And he'll be like, oh, dude, you're by Novo. Like, or you're by, <laughs> you know, you're, you're, you know, by all these <laughs> other Russian towns that I can't pronounce. You know what I mean? And he'll be like, where are you at? I'm like, I see a road sign with, with the letter C backwards e number four and it's like what are these words on the sign you know like they couldn't port it over to english so it makes it even more complicated but i love that feeling of um being lost in an apocalyptic environment with no loot feeling vulnerable and the only thing you want is the safety of a friend who will potentially 
that gives you a, that gives no it gives you a 50 50 chance of them getting shot first and you being able to get away <laughs> that's amazing the that's coming to xbox DC. this year as well it is they announced after it. like five years of beta yes oh really yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I don't it's another play a game lot you of... guys won't buy and play with me no that's true <laughs> <laughs> Um, the reason i don't play a lot of these games the walking simulator games is because i never really dug on like adventure games and i feel like they're like this is kind of like an offshoot of adventure games there were a Mm. couple of adventure games that kind of like the lucas arts ones that were kind of funny kind of hit me the right way but most of the time i always just felt bored like i come to video games for the action and for the for the adrenaline rush and for the for the for lack of a better word like stress and tension of it like because that's what makes yeah. me forget about my day right is like basically by like getting in there and like getting really absorbed and like trying to you know kill other people in the crucible or call of duty or whatever i'm playing like that's always what i really came to video games for even as a young child i always liked action games and like really high octane stuff and when i played stuff like um like the old adventure games or something like mist mist is one of my least favorite games of all time. And it's one of the best selling yeah. games of all time. Right. Yeah. I, I remember playing that and being like, this is the most boring fucking thing I've ever done in my entire life. I'd rather be at yeah. school. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. Was you, that bad? Guys, I never played it. It's, it's pretty fucking bad. Looked, it's looked so fucking slow. amazing. That's like a point and click static thing. Isn't it like a puzzle solver with yeah. static so, yeah. screens? Yeah. Do you guys remember an old NES game called named Shadowgate? Hundred yeah. percent. I was. It was. I was just gonna say that. The Shadow like Game a, was an early version of like Phantasmagoria or something like on the like those point I, and clicks. Wouldn't that be considered like a walking simulator? Like from you know a dated walking simulator. Sure. You just you walk through. I mean th- those kind of mm. games were so slow and so lethargic. It feels like right. you're over encumbered in The Witcher. And and that but feeling that's why, can really pull you out of a game. I think when I see the walking simulators now, like that's the memory that comes to mind. Like that's what they mm. what they bring to mind. Hellblade. I see what you're saying is, but it did have the action in there to sure kind of action was fast too. Yeah, I, I mean it wasn't great. It wasn't a great action, like great sword fighting game, but <laughs> it, it was there and it kind of it, it broke up just the walking forward part for me. Mm-hmm. And I think there are some really great experiences on your list, Gary, that I'd probably really love. But I don't know. There's a difference for me when I play a game what I'm looking for than when I watch a movie, what I'm looking for. And I, I feel like a lot of these games really what I'm, what I'd be coming for is the story. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's kind of what I love about them is that you don't get those stories in other games. You know, the gameplay can sometimes detract from the, the aspect of it. So a game like firewatch is all about just the realism. You know, it's just the guy's story, um, exploring, living through it. Everybody's gone to the rapture, similar thing. You're just exploring, what happened in this town where is everyone why are they all like turned into little lights you know it's just a i don't know to me it's like a a, it is watching a film but you're playing the film so i don't know i I just i've really started to get into that narrative and it's actually branching me out into other genres so there's a game that i played this week that i completed this week called celeste and I've been desperately trying to get you to buy it, Briar, which you keep telling me you will, um, I will. but you don't. I, I want to buy it too. You you asked me to buy it too, uh, Gary. So Celeste is um, a 2D ultra hard platformer, like Super Meat Boy, um, which is a genre that I would never play. I hate difficult games. I hate platformers. Nothing about that game would be something that would interest me. But it's got a really, really strong, almost like walking sim narrative on the back of it which you can skip completely. If you just want to play it to, to play the platformer, you can skip every cutscene, and it doesn't matter. You can get through it. But for me, I was like struggle busting through these really difficult platformer levels just because I wanted to hear Madeline's story, who's the main character in the game, um, as she climbs the mountain Celeste. Um, I just feel like, to me, the strong story drives me through these games, and that's what keeps me coming back. But I appreciate that not everyone's cup of tea, and I just wanted to see why you guys have strong feelings against them. No, no, I, I definitely don't think we have strong feelings against him. Uh, and we've all played him, but, you know, some are better than others. And, and uh, you know, I, I definitely play him again. You know, when that when that time, when 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 the time arises and it calls for it, but they're just not the first game I think we would go to. I think that's pretty much what we're thinking here. But it's a great topic, Gary. I don't know. I, I like the um, 
the uh, Celeste. I was watching KJ Hovey play the first, uh, I guess you can say like the introduction to the game. And right off the bat, you know, you know, it's got the indie style graphics and stuff, and that's a big turnoff for a lot of people. But one thing I feel like a lot of those indie games do, right, Gary, is tell an incredible story. Yeah. Like within the first five minutes, I wanted to know more about why she felt the need to climb the mountain. And, you know, there was, um, I don't really want to give any spoilers away, but I mean, there's some cool stuff. There's a little bit of mysticism. There's lots of adventure. There's, in my opinion, a really good storyline there. And I feel like that's where those indie games really come in as they carry weight in, uh, with the, uh, with their stories, in my opinion. Definitely. I, I just, I think you can't fault an indie game for it. I feel like they have freedoms, um, and creativity and they can tackle messages that AAA studios are scared to approach. And I think relevant topics. Yeah, it's it's just really, really good. I mean, I've, I've said it before, one of my favourite indie games, um, and I'll just plug it again, it's Finding Paradise, which is a story. And they also did a, a game called A Bird Story. It's by Freebird Studios, um, which was Freebird, um, sorry, uh, Bird Stories is, is there's no words in the game and it's just a story about a boy finding this little pigeon like dove thing and raising it and the game's told through a, a series of scenes of, of his life with this bird. But Finding Paradise is great. It's like two professors who work at a studio, um, like a, a kind of like a laboratory studio thing, where you come in as an elderly person and they'll just implant um, a history of memories, of happy memories in your life so that you can die happy. Like, you know, terminally ill patients come in and they find paradise. It's That's so awesome. emotionally touching. So they go into uh, a memory that you had and they recreate that memory to be a happy memory or like a, a positive memory, like Dream Doctors so cool i'd love to play a, a triple a version of that game but you never see it. it has to be pixel art because you know budget who's gonna touch a story about terminal illness like no one wants to do it yeah it sounds like Except a great me, movie apparently. too yeah it's <laughs> just some of the stories these indie games are just absolutely fantastic but you want to talk about um back to the topic of the walking simulator somebody had mentioned uh skyrim earlier and i know you can fast travel and stuff like that in skyrim but that's how you miss out on so much stuff like you'd be running up a random mountain and what are those guys that are kind of like they're like cat people kajits mm -hmm. i think they're called yeah kajit will come running up to you and all of a sudden you know he's got this problem he's got an issue and you can proc a quest line you can either choose to pursue it right then like i do you know what i mean i'll be in the middle of something someone will run up to me oh you know i, I need you to do this and that and i'll drop exactly what i'm doing go do that maybe get sidetracked when you find a cave on the way. And I love all those that. You caves, miss out on all yeah. that stuff if you fast travel between everything. And you always get those really awkward transitions where you fast travel all the time and the courier finds you right when you teleport into the into the game. And he's like, hey, I have a, a package for you or a letter for you. And it's always really, really startling. But um, I would consider that a walking simulator if you don't fast travel everywhere. But it's a walking simulator done right where so, so skyrim a, from, fallout all those yeah ages. from a to b sometimes c pops up you know what i mean and you got to go do that and it's you get back example. on track that's a good way to do a walking simulator because i have really bad add and when they're throwing all these quests at me i want to do them all you know so just going from a to b and having absolutely nothing happen in between so all right so the next topic is uh, highly contentious and uh, I'm anxious to hear uh, everybody's thoughts on this. Washington State Senator uh, Kevin Ranker to regulate loot boxes. So loot boxes have been in the news quite a bit over the last couple of weeks. And now a Washington senator is going to regulate them. Uh, whose topic was this? And, and why don't you share your thoughts? Uh, this was my topic. Uh, so what the bill basically says is um, uh, the state is to sit down and figure out the best way to regulate this. Uh, Ranker told us what. Uh, Senator Kevin Ranker told uh, news, it's unacceptable to be targeting our children with predatory gambling masks in a game with dancing bunnies or something, was his analogy. <laughs> what he playing? Yeah, right? Let's talk about some cool fucking weapon skins here, Kevin, for the Iron <laughs> Gallahorn or something. That's what we're after. We want the shit to look bling when it go boom. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Damn, dancing bunnies. Get out of here. But, um... They're talking about things like ESRB ratings if it has loot boxes because it's gambling and, you know, gambling has different ages in different states and stuff like that. So basically, not necessarily how do we feel about what Kevin Ranker is doing, but 
How do you guys feel about this subject as a whole? Do you guys think it's a dicey topic? Do you guys see loot boxes as a form of gambling? Because no. I, pers- I personally do. And if you're spending money on it and there's a chance to do something or a chance to win or you see an end goal that you want and you're paying money to have a chance to do it, I think that's the exact definition of gambling. I think it's the same personally. as a scratch-off ticket. And when you start, especially when you start getting into like the CSGO economy or the PUBG economy where you can actually resell this shit for real hmm. money, it's exactly like a stra- scratch off ticket. No, it's not. And I'll tell you why it's not and why I don't consider it gambling. A gambling is a transaction in which you can actually not win anything. Right. Boxes, like you can with loot, loot boxes. Loot boxes, you're going to win something. You might not win what you want, but you're going to win something. You might and win so that's, something that's worthless. And you might okay, win let me something ask you, that's... Let me ask you this real quick before, just so I can yeah. remember this point. You know the big machines that you go up to and they have the little plastic bubbles with the prize? Yeah. And you mm-hmm. look at the potential prizes on there and you see that big, cool looking watch. Of course. That 50. Amazing it's a dollar. yo-yo. It's a with dollar. The, with, yeah. You know, it's a bunch of yo-yos and they're all shitty in wood, but there's that one that's got the LED lights on it, you know, like it was Getting made from excited, Razor. Wilson. You know what I mean? Yeah. You put the quarter in, you, you don't get a shitty watch. You get a little, little, little ring, ring watch that doesn't fit your big ass <laughs> finger. Did you win? Did you win? Uh, I, I guess. I, I guess no. That's a good analogy. I, I, I remember that. that. <laughs> and, and sometimes Gary could use that ring for something else. Now Ooh. check it out. It's a little bit too big. I've tried. <laughs> <laughs> to me, it's like you've already uh, you've already accepted the possibility at that point that you're you're going to get something less. With right, a loop like uh, when you step up to a to a uh, like a one eye one armed what is it called? One armed bandit. bandit. Yeah, oh, I yeah. accept the fact that I'm gonna lose, but I'm hoping to win. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> see, to, me, to me, that's the that's the small thing that differentiates this from actual gambling. Because if you go into a casino, there's a chance you might not win anything and you'll lose everything you have. But a loot box, you might not win what you want, but you're going to win something every single time and probably get some good stuff along the way. So to me, it's a little bit different. Um, and to me, this whole issue with this senator, I got to say, I, I think it comes down. It starts in the house. It starts in the home. I don't think that it's any politician's job to regulate these kind of decisions. I think that, you know, it all it, it starts in the home. You know, I, I have money. And if my children want to buy something like this. I think that I've raised them well enough to be responsible to say, okay, this is a a worthwhile purchase and it's not really an issue. But when you have someone in a position of authority, just laying down laws, I think that that's overstepping their boundaries. That's my personal opinion. I mean, like you can get a loot box and overwatch. Okay. I'm a perfect example for this because I'm not like every overwatch player. Can we see your shirt? You see this t-shirt? There is only one character that I like to play, and that is Hanzo for the audio listeners that can't see. So when I open a loot box, all right, and I get something for, I get a voice line for May, I get a sticker for Junkrat, and a, another sticker for Doomfist, and nothing for Hanzo. You know what I mean? I'm instantly don't give a shit. I, I've started playing Ryan recently, so you'd be proud of me. I'm branching out. I'm actually becoming a decent Reinhardt. But <clears throat> to me, if I don't get anything from Hanzo, it's a wasted loot box. You know, and I'm sure a lot of people. I feel the same way if it's not May or, or Diva. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And Briar said it Diva. perfectly a long time ago on, on a really old uh, Planet Destiny podcast. He coined it perfectly. The loot drop that you get feeds this, this dopamine drip into your brain, and it feels really good when you get the loot drop that you want. You know what I mm-hmm. mean? And naturally, you want more afterwards i don't see all of them as predatory but i definitely see it as if you're not earning it in game if you're spending real life money it in my opinion is a form of gambling i know it's not the same as going to the casino and throwing two grand down on red at at roulette you know i mean it's not the same it's a lesser evil for lack of a better word i mean not all gambling is not evil it's bad analogy but just just to clarify the conversation the the actual definition of gambling is to play games of chance for money or to take risky action in the hope of a desired result so every time we have sex babe 
<laughs> so, like, with that being said, take risky action in the hope of a desired result. This is gambling, right? Doesn't, uh, doesn't a loot box exactly fit that definition? Is it risky? I don't know. I mean, I guess. I mean, remember the little the little moblin in Legend of Zelda that, that you could walk up and touch the ruby, and he's like, "It's a chance, but yeah. it's a gamble to everyone." You know what I mean? You walk up and touch it, and it says minus. You got the best analogies, rubies. man. You know what I mean? Like it's it's very me, similar. When this conversation to me is uh, it's a dangerous one. I I'm kind of with you, Beastly. I don't really want our government getting involved in this, but if the if the companies are not willing to self-regulate, I mean, we're talking about a very, you know, very at-risk demographic, and that's children. Right? You're, right. Yeah. you're right. You're right. You're, you're this right should there. start at home. This should start at home, but it's not gonna. Yeah. Let's yeah. be realistic, right? It's for, in some families it will, in some families it won't. Already over. Yeah. Yeah. You're but right. does because kids have a shitty parents, does that mean they should be protected? You're right. So I, I really, I honestly, I'm I. I don't think it's a good idea that our government gets involved in this. I think that the the industry should be all over self-regulating yeah. this right now. They should definitely be getting an ESRB system in place, you know, because they they don't want the government getting involved in it. Gamers don't want the government getting involved in it. Nobody except for the government wants to get involved in it, right? I tell you, but, but, no the, but the way end result the government could be better involved. for the kids. If the government gets involved, there's no way they are outlawing it or regulating it. I think, if anything, they tax it. That's the only thing I see the government doing is just putting a hefty taxation on loot boxes because they see it's a lucrative income. EA getting, what, $2 billion a year from loot boxes? Spoken like from... a true American, Gary. Yeah, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I, I disagree. <laughs> Our government takes some really really strong outlooks on gambling. Like, you know, they basically shut down uh, online poker mm. when they had the opportunity to tax that, but they basically shut it down. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the, in a bunch of... When the, when it comes to gambling, our comfort, our our government is pretty conservative about it, and you yeah. know I think those that that is opening up over time. Um, but I mean they've shut down quite a few things like this. I mean the and UK has involved. relaxed gambling laws from from where I'm coming from. You can I mean obviously there's age limits etc. But like we've got a lot. I mean I don't know if it's a British cultural thing, but there's a lot of like bookies gambling places on you just walk down a street and there'll be like paddy power you know bookmaster ladbrooks like there would just be like seven or eight gambling stores you just walk into and they're like horse races up on the side like sports up there slot machines just everything there and they're open like from like 8 a.m till like 11 p.m every day you know and it's just uh, there's there's a lot more tolerance to gambling in the uk there's just a lot more acceptance of it i don't know whether it's a uk problem um, but I mean, on the topic of loot crates themselves, I think that it's a problem that's going to correct itself for the most part within the industry, because I feel like the worm is turning um, of public opinion against loot crates. And I feel like it's a dirty word to have associated with your game, with the exception of things like FIFA and Madden and NBA, like the sports games where I think people are relatively re- immune to it, or resilient to it. I feel like games are moving towards the um, monthly servicing model. So EA are already supplementing it with EA Access, Microsoft looking at Game Pass. Um, I feel like that is the future now where publishers just want to take a monthly cut of your fee um, and and sell your DLC on top of it. I feel like loot boxes are something that it was a way of generating revenue on top of box sales, but I I feel like there's going to be other monetization opportunities for companies. I feel like loot crates are... What scares me, Gary, I hope you're right. What scares me is when Activision does its earnings call and says half of its revenue on the year was based off of loot boxes. Mm-hmm. And when it was. EA, yeah. EA, you know, they get into all this shit about Star Wars and this week announce loot boxes are coming back to Star Wars. Yeah, that's yeah, not yeah. that's not this self-regulation. Not, it's not correcting not itself at all. Well, they just, they said that they were come those loot. That's no surprise that those loot boxes are back. They said they were coming back and they were going to revamp them and stuff. But I feel like the best way to describe this topic is we're looking at shades of gray, <clears throat> as far as what is the lesser gambling, what is you know, because we're car- comparing everything else to casino gambling. My parents run a sports memorabilia store where they sell sports memorabilia, packs of cards, autograph things. And I've had this discussion with them before. I mean, I've even asked them growing up, do you think that people who come in and 
purchase a pack or a box of cards are essentially gambling. And my dad basically did the same thing that Briar did and was looked up the definition of gambling. You know what I mean? He's like, yeah, I mean, like when you put it that way, like they essentially are, but it's just the shades of gray. And if something becomes, I, I think it's almost too big for them to ignore at this point. I mean, if there's billions of dollars of revenue that is being sold on these things a year, like, I mean, I can guarantee you at some point the government's going to get involved somehow with that money, whether that's putting stiffer um, <clears throat> safeguards on, you know, people in chat are like, where are all these kids with money? Kids are getting Amazon gift cards nowadays. It'd be nothing for some kids to go to their parents and say, let me get five, ten dollars for a game and not tell them that it's for a loot box. You know what I mean? Because you do have things like PlayStation Store and you do have sales on games. You have Steam sale. You have indie games. You know what I mean? You get and, stories of kids that will take their allowances or their Christmas money and spend it on Counter-Strike skins with the hope that they'll get a knife that will be worth like two thousand dollars and then they'll yep. flip their money and make it that way like you hear that quite frequently i think of that every time i open up a loot box in PUBG, i'm like i'm gonna get that fucking pink dress i'm gonna sell the shit out of that thing and i'm gonna buy <laughs> did you, everyone did you guys, golf with friends everyone everyone did you guys, did you guys hear, hear the story last week of the guy who uh, makes money by flipping uh, skins in counter-strike he bought a skin for thirty thousand dollars and sold it for 64. it was on the local news here in atlanta and they're talking uh, yeah. about it, and this sixty thousand dollars for a Counter Strike skin, and this guy flipped it. He paid thirty thousand for it. Uh, the, the one thing I can say about Destiny <laughs> is that at least they don't allow the trading of these skins between accounts. Because if they did that, yeah. oh, oh my God. man, because you'd be in a Counter Strike that. situation where, or a PUBG situation. PUBG filled with fucking cheaters because they're trying to get those fucking expensive ass skins that they could then sell, right? You take if PUBG just you know disallowed being able to sell those things on the Steam store, then suddenly I th I think that a lot of the cheaters would just be gone because the, the game would be good again. Wouldn't yeah. be there anymore. Yeah. Wow, that's a good point. Yeah, it, it's crazy. I would really like to see it disappear. I hope that they find another way, like Gary was saying, to to monetize. Uh, you know, if they want to do subscriptions, I think that's a, a wonderful thing to do. The way Xbox Live does it, the way EA, EA Access does it. Nintendo's got, you know, like their new system coming online. I hope that ends up being the way. Um, but yeah. the loot crate situation is out of hand, and I think it's, I, th I think it is predatory. Um, and I, I really, you know, it's really to me, it's, it's people taking money over, uh, you know, like the high road to me. I think the issue is like with the way that games have been priced. And we've spoken around the rising cost of games. I mean, games do cost a lot to develop, whether it's more or less is inconsequential. It's The fact is $60 for a game is not going as far as it used to. And games now, even the big, big hitters are selling, what, like four or five million copies? Yeah. Um, and you've got, what, 70 million people that own a PS4 um, and then 30 five million or so that own an xbox one so you've got like a hundred million consoles out in the ecosystem and a big hit is selling five million so you know that's why they have to move to these subscription models where yes you know you you might not get your 60 dollars up front but if 50 percent of your audience are on that subscription base then that's like selling you know multi-platinum games every single month just on the basis of what you've got so you know it's fucked I up see, here i'm oh, sorry well, go ahead no no right. just i'm saying i see that as being a much more sustainable revenue stream and one that is going to be scrutinized far less because Netflix has already done the hard work of making that something that psychologically feels acceptable and right. Yeah. Netflix, Spotify, yeah. Ton tons of services. Yeah. Um, the, you know, what's fucked up about the price of games is that I, when I was a kid and playing Sega Genesis games, I was paying $80 for a game. Yeah. And the games were priced based on uh, how the, big the, the game. game was literally because the the cost of memory to actually burn the ROM on was, you know, a, a, a significant cost of actually buying a cartridge. So if you wanted to buy Fantasy Star 4, you had to pay 80 or $90 because it was actually like a 16 megabyte cart as opposed to like the 4 megabyte cart that most games were. And it cost more to produce, so you paid more for it. And I don't really understand why, why games don't do that now. Like, yeah, we don't they have the physical do. product. So you get that, like, Shadows of the Colossus is a remake and a smaller game, so that's a $40 game. Yeah. 
Um, so it's a smaller thing. Nintendo Switch actually does exactly what you've said. So the Switch cartridges, um, I forget what the capacity on them is. I think it's 32 gigabyte, might be less. Um, but if you want a larger Switch cartridge, then the game actually costs more um, to make. So that's why, you, you know, people say there's a Switch tax. So like, yeah. like Rhyme, for example, Rhyme was like $30, $40 on pretty much any platform that it came out on. And the Switch, it was a $60 game just because, you know, it costs more to physically put them on carts. Um, so you are seeing that, you know, the games are disproportionate. To, uh, the pricing is proportionate to the size of the game. So Hellblade, Hellblade was a $40 game, I think, yeah. uh, on console. But they kind of cap uh, out at 60 Yeah, but I mean, you yeah. tend to get them scaled down. So $60 is what the standard price is, but you do get cheaper games based on sizing there. Um, you know, more expensive games. I think the Switch is probably the only platform that has games above sixty dollars on release, Are at they, least in the UK. Would you guys? Yeah, what would you guys say if I, uh, uh, like um, The Witcher Four? Yeah, their new Cyberpunk game. What, what if that was eighty dollars? I'd buy yeah, it. You'd, you'd buy it. I'd buy it. I, I mean, yeah. What about, what, what's something it. more marginal. What about Destiny Three? What if that came out eighty dollars? What would you say to that? Does it include the the DLC? I mean, I don't. I, I, don't, no, I don't think no, that. Where no, there'll be get, a ton of loot. To let's <laughs> say, let's say, all right. So let's say it's you know 2020, and we're looking uh, Destiny Three right in the face, and they announce the pricing for Destiny Three. It's going to be eighty dollars for the base version, a hundred and thirty dollars for you know the the season pass edition. What would you guys say to that? Uh, I, I think we I'm fucking a hopeless romantic when it comes to the game. Would you be upset I think about Destiny? It, it's, <sighs> Destiny's not a big enough game to do that, in my opinion. So the games that could do that and move the market and set the price so that everyone else could do it would be FIFA, Madden, GTA, um, anything like that. The Call of Duty. These games that sell regardless. The the people that buy three to four games a year that buy Madden, FIFA, Call of Duty, and GTA. If one of them came out and said, by the way, our sticker price is $80 or $100, yeah. still sell. Still sell easily, and then every other developer could look at it. I, I think a sports game could do it. So this year, the the Madden game or the NBA game is eighty dollars. End of. That's out, the standard. Let's say, like, let's say, I, I like a um, Dark Soldiers suggestion, Borderlands Three. Imagine Borderlands Three. They came out and they said, "Look, it cost us this much to develop this game. Uh, we've decided we don't want microtransactions or loot boxes in the game. So to offset that cost." We've decided to release this game at ninety dollars. How would that make I you think feel as a consumer? They shoot themselves in the foot. And not it's not this we are a group of hardcore gamers. The average person buying games, you've just cannibalized sales. If I'm a parent buying a Christmas game for my kid and Borderlands three is ninety dollars, or there's another one there for sixty dollars, I'm gonna tell the kid, like, you know, you you can have that one for sixty dollars. I just I think Borderlands does not have enough sway where it's the must have game. I don't think even with the rationalization that you say, um, I don't think the general consumers would do it, but you guys might have well, different opinions. I, I, I think that it you know, it depends on the cachet and how much cachet a, a developer or a game has. The Witcher series has the cachet. They could do that. Any Rockstar game has the cachet. I think that uh, Naughty Dog has the cachet to do it with their games. People aren't willing to spend that kind of premium or pay that premium for a game that might not deliver. But the next Grand Theft Auto game will definitely deliver. Look what um, look what uh, CD Projekt Red did with The Witcher, and what they're doing with um, Cyberpunk. How many That's going to deliver. bought CD uh, Witcher three though because it was on sale for like fifteen bucks. I bought it when it launched. I know. I don't know. Like I, I just wonder how price sensitive uh, gamers are. I, I think they are price sensitive. I think they are outside of certain titles. Like I said, the annualized sports franchises, the Call of Duties, they're the ones that could move the market. I think everyone else, which is a great game. Don't get me wrong. I love The Witcher. I think The Witcher is the gamer's game, but I don't think it's the mass market's game. How many people, if you but walked it, up to an average person in the street, would know what The Witcher is, or how many people would know what FIFA or Call of Duty is? But if they sell that game, let's say, for the first two months or three months at that, you know, increased cost, whatever it is, seventy dollars, ninety dollars. Some accountant would have to figure out all that out, right? Um, how much would that offset? You know, the the people who didn't buy it because it's more than sixty dollars, and then how much of that would? And then when they reduce yeah. the price to sixty dollars for say the holiday season, you know, all of a sudden it's a sixty dollars sale. <laughs> like I don't know, it's it'd be interesting. One. Yeah, 
I'm different though because I justify a purchase by how much time I spend into it. And a perfect example of that is, well, I could have went and spent 30, 35 bucks at the movie theater and gotten two hours of enjoyment. Or I can buy a game like Destiny. I bought the $100 version. I don't even want to look at how many hours I already have at the D2. I know I'm creeping up on close to 1,000 between console and PC. Yeah, easily. Time wasted on Destiny right now. Yeah. (laughs) And, you know, you... That's how I justify my purchases, how much value, time spent. You know, that's why, like, when it's a little off topic, but when I buy a chair, I realize that I'm going to be spending a shitload of time in it, so I invest well in my chair. Mm. It's kind of the same thing with the game. I guess if they were going to sell those passes, they would have to show me, like, what they're going to be able to deliver on with the game. They're going to have to show me that that value is there and that they're going to continue to support the game, and it's not going to end up, like, what if Lawbreakers sold a $90 version and they had this awesome <laughs> plan for the future? And they're like, yeah. it's awesome. Eight of you get to enjoy it. You know what I mean? Like, and I hate poking cold, fun at that man. game because that's, that's fucking rough. Like, yeah, that's rough. I enjoyed I mean, it. Me and Gary played it and we enjoyed it. We thought it was cool. I actually uh, bought it. The thing is, uh, whoever decides to, to travel this road, the first, the first company that does it is going to have a really rough time. Uh, the the only way that this would be able to work is if multiple developers decided to do it at the same time. If you go out there and put your foot in the water first, your project is dead. People are going to protest, and it's going to be so much hate and shade being thrown at your company. There needs to be more than one company that does this at the same time to kind of even the playing field, so people will kind of accept it more. But if a developer just comes out there and says, "We got our game for the first time ever. We're going to sell this game for ninety dollars." Everybody's going to fucking, you know, be like rabble, rabble from, uh, from a, what's that? Uh, South Park, you know, rabble, rabble. People just going fucking crazy in, in, in the streets. Uh, so they need to be careful and it needs to be a developer with a game that has the cachet to actually do it. You know, News update on Lawbreakers briefly before we go on. If anyone is looking to play it, now's <laughs> a great time because there's currently 10 people playing. <laughs> so you might get a game. You might so, get a match. Uh, yeah. Just, Hopefully that If you want to play full. now. <laughs> exactly. Get, get in that are, are, you, are you kidding? You, no. You no, no the, the, the number is 10. 10 people playing in the world right 10. now. 10. Which means you're going to get shit on by the same 10 people as a oh, new player. Oh, shit. Oh, oh, imagine player, if you right? were the best player in the world. Yeah. Yeah. You're literally, you could be the best player in the world. There's only fucking well, 10 other people you got to go up against. definitely be top 10 in the world. If you play Lawbreakers That's right now. That's hard to believe. Oh, my you'd be, God. You'd be top 11. <laughs> top 11. <laughs> You think those other ten guys are sitting around going, "Oh, we got, we got, we got, got, we got some fresh meat. <laughs> we got, we got about twenty minutes before this guy fucking uninstalls the game." It's like that scene <laughs> at Rounders. <laughs> it's like that scene at Rounders where the poker table is just completely filled by like professional poker players and they're sharks. just like watching like random people like step up to the table and like feeding on them like sharks. Just sharks, is it out of the man. question do Revolver plays Lawbreakers on Tuesday? <laughs> just could they we get a guy? matches? <laughs> That is guy. unbelievable. God, I didn't know it went that wrong. I know everyone's, I mean, like, you, you look at the numbers for Trials of Osiris. Um, it was 6,000 total Guardians entered Trials for PC. Like tw- o- Overall, between PC, Xbox, and PlayStation, it's about 40,000 people who stepped into Trials. And everyone's like, yikes, that's really low. And then you hear Gary say 10, 10. people <laughs> playing Lawbreakers and <laughs> And BC's like, I mean, wait, like be, 10,000? No, to 10. be fair, I, I, no, let's call it where it is. I don't want to misrepresent Lawbreakers. That is currently playing. It did have a slightly higher peak over 24 hours. So the highest thing that we had uh, at the absolute peak was 18 players. So that's Cliffy B's game, right? Yeah, it is. How the hell is this happening? This is like the Twilight Zone for this catch, guy. Man. I just feel really I bad for him. I got to tell you, like, that game was. Wasn't it trying to eat Overwatch's lunch? Yes, it yeah. was. Yeah. I mean, that's just a fucking dumb move, if you ask me. They even had a character just like Farah, who I believe when yep. they when they did their ultimate said, uh, death from above, instead of justice reigns from above. It was like death reigns from above, and it's like, hmm, I've heard that before. Oh, that is so <laughs> sad. It sucks, but, I mean, it is what it is. What like, was that I one just... by uh, the guys who make Borderlands? That one died quick too. Battle, Battleborn? Battleborn. Battleborn, yeah. Or is Tessie called it Stillborn? I can't now, believe or... he dropped that. Or Say what? 
Didn't they stop supporting that game because of Fortnite or something? Or what game was it that they dropped recently because Gigantic of Fortnite? Gigantic has been No, Paragon, you're talking about. Par- that's Paragon. Games. I always mix those two up. But, yeah, they dropped Paragon because of the success of Fortnite. They figured that one's doing so much better. We might as well cut our losses. and. Everybody's copying off of someone else and trying to, to do a better job. Uh, uh, there's a new Battlefield in, in development now. And it sounds like they're going to steal the PUBG formula for this new Battlefield. You guys heard anything about this? Yeah, I gotta be honest crazy. with you. Crazy. Ba- I think there's room still for a really good, like Battle a really Royale. good triple A um, Battle, Royale. Battle Royale. Yeah, I played this week. I played a little bit of a game called uh, Islands of Nine, which yes. is a first person kind of high octane uh, Battle Royale game where it's it feels more like a first person shooter, like like a Call of Duty or something, like a real arcadey kind of thing. And I gotta say, there was some real appeal there. Like, what's it, it called? Was, uh, Battle in, or Islands of Nine? Islands it was fast nine. paced. It was fun. It was difficult, but it was it was cool. Wow. Um, I I could see like Battlefield doing something really cool. Call of Duty doing something cool. When we were p- first playing uh, PUBG for the first time, I remember having that conversation. I can't wait for somebody to make like a good version of this. <laughs> Dude, that that what is it? Islands of the Nine that you were playing? Yeah. The shooting looks fucking solid in that it's game. Good. Like it's, it's it not a graphically good. beautiful game. It kind of reminds me of the graphics from Ark. Okay, so I'm I'm recall. seeing it. Yeah, it does look pretty cool. It looks very Arky, but dude, I mean, how many games have we played that haven't looked great, but just the mechanics feel spot it does, on? You it know? does a couple of cool things. Is one is that. No matter where you drop, you get guns like pretty damn quick. Like if you drop into a place with six people and they're all dropping in with fifteen feet of each other, then yeah, you're gonna die to the first person who gets a gun. But if if you drop, you know, basically anywhere, you're gonna find a gun real quick, you're gonna find armor real quick, and you're gonna have a fighting chance, which is different to me than like something like PUBG, where you know, sometimes I drop in and the first six places I check don't have a gun, right? And that yeah. can be really frustrating. But then once you have a gun, <laughs> It feels like an arcadey shooter, like a like a battlefield, like a Call of Duty, you know, like where you're running and gunning and you, you know, if you like that Call of Duty feel, but you'd like it to be in something besides just a, a 4v4 or 6v6 deathmatch all the time, it it's it's appealing. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the fact that so many developers are, are moving in that direction, this Battle Royale uh, recipe might be the direction that shooters are going in general. Everybody seems to enjoy them. I mean, it would be I'm really cool to see. sick of the 4v4, the 6v6. Yeah. You know, Deathmatch has been around for a long time, and to see like uh, something brand new in that space is pretty exciting. Yeah, I mean, the whole formula, the way they do it, you drop in, you find stuff, you, you get your health, your armor, and then you go. But to see a battlefield or a Call of Duty like that, that would be nuts mm-hmm. if they were somehow, yeah, to kind of like add a mode in a Call of Duty that allows you to do that or a battlefield. It would be insane. And then, so, um, I mean, I heard of- seeing good things for the Hunt Showdown. I don't know if that's what you guys were going to talk about, but that, that to me, I think that's going to be the next big thing. So oh, it, yeah. check that one out if you haven't already. Basically, that's PV, PVE VP. Um, so it's kind of like what they did with the Dark Zone in Division. Um, but it's like uh, that in a Battle Royale scenario. And also, it's not just if you die, that's it. Your character's gone. You actually have persistent... Um, character progression so you've got your individual guy that you play um, and you play a game and if you survive that game then that particular character moves on to the next game and gets stronger and and tougher um, you know manages to extract with a bounty but on top of that if your guy dies you've still got an xp bar that's going up at all times and you're still able to actually upgrade your overall loadout and progress so there's an rpg element with a battle royale with um zombies zombie pve hunting game going on as well it's to me that it looks fantastic from what i've seen the gameplay is okay it's early alpha um but i think it's got such a positive um unique selling point that nothing else is doing i think that's going to do yeah really, really I, I saw i actually saw this game uh, it was in my youtube feed last week there was a three-hour uh stream that someone was doing and i wanted to see it and yeah, yeah. it looked looked better than pretty much everything else that's out you know, you got the battle royale mechanics and zombies, which I love. So yeah, that's definitely something I'm going to be looking forward to. Did you guys get a chance to see that game? Yeah, I've watched quite a bit of it. Uh, the thing about 
the thing about that genre now, I think, is that it is so wide open. Is you can do something like the hunt, you can do something with Battlefield, you can do something like Fortnite is doing, where you have building added to Battle Royale. Like this is wide open right now. It's just because, just because PUBG kind of like you know popularized it's it, it yeah. doesn't mean that it's got to be the final word in what Battle Royale becomes. Just like Call of Duty, you know, COD Four wasn't the the final word in what you know. You know, their their four v four, six v six was. Yeah, well, it's exciting. It's an exciting time to be a gamer, man. We got <laughs> now our, our crazy topics, guys. We're going to get into the weeds a little bit and uh, hopefully have some fun with these next topics. So this topic is one that was suggested by Kate, my lady, uh, and so she gave me my my two topics. And the first one is to corrupt a wish. So this is how it works. Someone says a wish. We get to grant that wish to them, but we have to corrupt it. So as an example, I wish for a new car. And someone would say, granted, but the car has no engine or something like that. So who would like to make their first wish? Oh, so we're going to make a wish and then everybody else is going to corrupt it? I yes. wish I could fly. <laughs> oh, let, who's who's going to corrupt this shit? All right. Oh. Uh, if I'm the bad genie, I'm going to allow you to fly, but I'm going to give you no no way of decelerating. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say you're gonna make me get on an airplane every day or something because I hate fucking airplanes. That's true. That's easy. You just get an infinite frequent flyers ticket. You can get on any plane okay, at so, all times. Wilson, you can fly, but, but you have a theme song that plays around you at, at, at extremely high volume all the time, and it's R. Kelly's "I Believe I Can Fly," and it'll never ever end. That that's not a that's that doesn't make it worse for me. I don't know. About it. <laughs> I don't know about 24 hours in. <laughs> You'd be fucking livid. You start I mean, hearing the lyrics before they flying, even come right? out. It only plays also, when I fly. It plays all flying. the time. How are oh. you flying? Are you flying with wings or do you just have telekinesis? I don't know. You guys are the ones fucking corrupting. I was hoping, you know, I just. Superman. Just, you know, like Superman yeah, Superman. Superman. Yeah. Okay. How much physical exertion does it take to Superman? Hmm. Like I would imagine calories? less. Like, I, I, you know, like. When, five G's. When you gotta like take like a, a really big dump, uh -huh. about that much energy when you're <laughs> when you're taking a dump, I'd imagine it would take that much energy to lift you. You can fly, I mean, but shit is your propulsion system. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking. He's like, the easiest even, guy to find. Depends how fast shit. you can move. If you can move about the speed of a car, if we're just going on vehicle wise, mm -hmm. even like. Miami to Georgia, which I've done on a drive. That was like an eight hour drive. So imagine shitting for eight hours solid, what that's going to do to your intestine to get there. It's just a, a lot of a strain on the rectum. They, they say a bird shits like every 30 seconds to a minute. And what is that? I think you're on to something, Briar. I think that's their means of propulsion. <laughs> what about if you could fly, but you could only do it completely nude? Clothes just ruin the aerodynamics. <laughs> Damn. So you just have to be free balling, dick and balls hanging while you're flapping above the town. And it's it's cold when you fly, Wilson. Real cold. It's the spoiler. The the, the wind directs the wind. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, Who's gonna fuckers. go next? Yeah, we love you, Wilson. Uh, I'm gonna, my I'm wish. Go ahead, BC. My wish is is to to be my 21 year old self for the rest of my life. Like I I go back to being 21. And to me, that's the perfect age. I'll be stuck at 21 for the rest of my life until my natural age progression, the day I'm supposed to die, and then I just yeah, croak. But you'll die in like a 21-year-old body. Yeah. Okay, so you revert back to your 21-year-old self, but you realize that nobody likes you anymore. No, no, that nobody likes the 21-year-old you. <laughs> I liked you when you were old, Brett. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. I, I'm gonna go different ways. I'm gonna with that 21 year old body. You also get your 21 year old mind, and your 21 year old oh. mind cannot never grow. It stays with that 21 year old <laughs> oh, mentality. Shit. Everything you've learned up to the time you turn 21 is all you can ever learn. Right, just, <laughs> just destroyed it. Stuck make at the 21. Same colossal, colossal fucking errors day yeah. in and day out. Anything you learned oh, yesterday. Long. Anything you gone. learned yesterday would be forgotten, and anything you learned today would be forgotten tomorrow because you'll just be right back to your 21st birthday. <laughs> Actually, I would... Ground my baby! I would give you the age of 21, but I would just then make you 21 
forever. Like, I could forever. Die. You couldn't die. You couldn't kill couldn't yourself. Die. You He'd couldn't be immortal. Die. Mortally 21. Done. I don't immortal know. Man, that sounds good to me. I'd, what happens if, like, a up. meteor hits the Earth and, like, no, you'd learn, then you'd just be floating years, in, space. in space. Like fucking just floating Gary in space Diaz. I'm not seeing the downside here. Well, everyone you've ever space known or loved dope. would die around you. Oh, no, that's real that's, fucked up. Uh, you just fucking killed that one. Yeah. <laughs> you just meet new people, <laughs> and then you meet them <laughs> new together. families. What the fuck? <laughs> you meet that person, and you go, "Do you know what? What's the point in talking to you? Because in 60 years, you'll be dead, and I'll still be here. That's it." That's true. Well, I mean, you could have a shit ton of kids, Gary. I mean, imagine having a conversation. With your Give great, it enough great, time, great, great, great everybody granddaughter. would be your kid. Yeah, I mean, I would make that my, my goal. <laughs> you, know, like, you just I made mean, it. it okay. literally have to, anyone you ever come in contact with, you know you're going to bury them one day. Everyone. Full stop. I mean, all you do then is just make tons of enemies. Look, how you doing today? It's a shitty day, fucker. And then you just, I'll see you when you're dead. Uh, now I see the downside. Beastly just explained to it me to it is that's what you turn into i think and then with there's with no joy what's the point i know and people would shoot you and the bullet would just bounce off and you'd be like oh fuck another day if you're oh, at least you gave me that. And, and you watch everyone around you that die that means you become the grim reaper that's it you oh. don't have to eat because you can't die you guys are making this pretty <laughs> cool I, I but, think but if you got your 21 shit. year old body you could eat whatever you want and never get all fat. day long and never get oh, fat. Oh, you lived in a country grow. where you had to be 22 to drink. Oh, <laughs> oh. yeah, you 21 forever, but you're, it's not you're not old enough to drink. <laughs> oh, yeah, suddenly I don't want to be 21 anymore. No, man, I, I oh, can't man. learn anything. I want to make the mistakes. Up. Uh-huh. When I was 21 is when I probably knew the least and I thought I knew the most. It's a very it's a very oh, yeah. troubling it's weird, right? Time. Yeah, you, you just you run your mouth constantly and you don't know shit. Yeah. Oh, it's horrible. Oh, I knew everything at 21. I don't know what you're talking about. Man. <laughs> the funny thing is, I still think I know everything. I know that in 20 years, I'll be looking back at my now self being like, yeah, what an it. idiot. Dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank you guys for you're corrupting. You're responding that bullshit my... on two podcasts, you dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a pretty straightforward one. So I wish that I could not see above 30 frames per second that would be my wish wow you wish you couldn't see above 30 frames? i couldn't see that could was the be... maximum that human eye my You'd human eye still could hate see. bloodborne <laughs> <laughs> probably because i feel like then i would be less picky i wouldn't care about what game i played because everything would look good everything okay. would look you like can, you, the human eye hertz. can only see up to 30 frames a second but all the games that come out are only 15 games or 15 frames per second yeah oh, but then yeah. at least at least i am only getting it half as bad you guys are getting it like seven times worse than everyone else so i'm like this looks a little bit choppy but well, you guys are okay, like, so the rest of the world can still see yeah high it's just me personally it? okay Right. Everything I mean, looks better. I feel like you just today. cursed yourself. This is like, what yeah, am I going to do to make yourself. that worse? You just fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm going to laugh and say, wish I'm granted. Not. I don't got to do shit. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Next. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Done. I'd have it. I'd so, have it. Uh, I, Gary, I get Gary. Cheap PC hardware because I don't need to run shit at 30 frames. Be That's great. true. You'd save Quite a lot right. of money on PC stuff. So, uh,. Your wish has been granted, but every game that's 30 frames and below is excruciatingly difficult and a horror game. So uh, have at it, Huss. I don't Two like things horror. that Gary hates. He he hates really tough games. He just said that during the show. And he cowers like a bitch in the corner when a horror game comes on. Okay. So uh-huh. um, now he's fucked. I got a good one. Games, all games are 30 frames a second. Or I'm sorry, um... All games are 15 frames a second, but you have a chance at getting 30 frames a second locked behind a loot box that may or may not contain the <laughs> item that you need to make it a full 30 frames a second. And you and you dump every last earned penny week in and week out into that loot box and never get it. That's yeah. your That's punishment. a sad life. Gary yeah, would be hit by a bus the first time he crossed the road. <laughs> like, and, what? I and, couldn't and, see and, it. The bus was just slightly <laughs> moving. He gets into a car accident. I can only see 30 frames a second. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's almost a superpower more than a disability. Oh, my mm. God. I see it. Just, just being hell on earth. <laughs> what you got for us, Brian? What's your wish? 
Uh, I think I would have the ultimate superpower of a built-in aimbot. Oh, fuck. That's awesome. I would be just badass at every fucking shooter. But in real life or in games? Fuck you like John in Wick? real life, too. Give me a fucking yeah. gun and I'll be like, pata, 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 pata. Okay. Every shot you hits. Gotta, headshot, you headshot, headshot, headshot. You- you have ascended to the top of every video game leaderboard because you yes. have a built-in aimbot. You are the right. pinnacle. You are the pinnacle of violence, speed, momentum, and whoa, aggression. Whoa, whoa. I don't cheat on my wife. Okay, you're right. My bad. <laughs> my bad. Maybe not all those things. But you, you're you the pinnacle of gaming. But you're so high at the pinnacle of gaming that now nobody wants to fucking play anymore. So you're the only person playing every game. You what? are playing Wait, like, Everybody just stops playing video games all together. Yeah, because they're just going to get fucking shit on by you. Oh, join the fucking army. <laughs> <laughs> join the army. They can't do anything because the army gets aimbotted from across the map with a right. revolver. Would you not just give him the power of the aimbot, but then only make it work in Lawbreakers? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> it would be the only game that works in. Oh, fuck. <laughs> it's just fun. Hey, guys, you want to play some Lawbreakers? You want to play some lawbreakers, guys? Come on, come on. Let's go play some lawbreakers. <laughs> Farming them. So, bro, you have this aim bot, and it's with you all the time. Yeah. But it's controlled by Stephen Hawking. It's a button next to his chair, the button he moves to walk around. He controls your aim bot for you. He has a screen in front of him. That's Good not luck. an aim bot. That's how I play now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you get Stephen Hawking in the room with you, that's not a that's not a penalty. That's pretty badass. Yeah, shit. <laughs> or you give him the aimbot. Have a microphone you, put in. And then you only permit him to play games that require no aim. So like real time strategies, <laughs> ARPGs, or Overwatch. You have to you have to main Symmetra and Winston. <laughs> Or, require or you end up picking soldier and you get the aimbot super and it's an aimbot on top of an aimbot, which everybody knows that's equivalent to like crossing the streams and Ghostbusters. Like you're fucked at that point. Oh, so man. yeah. Soldier 76 is out. Man, I, I would like to be a I would love to be a Ghostbuster. You just made me nostalgic. A Ghostbuster. Oh, Mr. Uh, yeah, that'd be awesome. Wouldn't you love to be a Ghostbuster, man? Well, you, uh, what, what if we were the Ghostbusters, the four of us? Which one? Well, we know which one you'd be. Winston. Wow. I was, I was thinking say Egon. Egon. I don't know where this yeah. Winston came from. That sounds <laughs> crazy. <laughs> shit. Like, I've always thought of myself as a bit of a Winston, but never mind. I, honestly, I think you are, Gary. You, you you know, I think, you know, under that pink hoodie, you're blacker than me, man. I know. Man, it's like let I've me seen... pick you up and down. <laughs> I've seen shit that'll turn you white. Yeah. <laughs> We'd be, we'd be the best fucking Ghostbusters. That's like Mike Tyson saying, I'm going to fuck you till you love me. Like, <laughs> what does that even mean? What does that I even that's mean? That's the line that got him convicted, wasn't it? <laughs> Do you remember that beastly? Do you remember him saying, I'm going to fuck you till you love me? <laughs> oh, my God. And Gary said, that's the line that got him convicted. Of. <laughs> it was, man. He spent a few years in the slammer for that one. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I had to go there. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, Jesus! You guys, all right, what's next? Nice. What's the next? Well, you talk. Beastly wants to talk about all you know all these things. The nostalgia of the Ghostbusters. So I came up with something called Revolver Remembers, mm-hmm. and this is this is you know there's no basic criteria or guideline here, but all the time I get the '80s and '90s nostalgia vibes from yeah. things like uh, Talk it, Boy. Narrow it down. To, Let's just do '90s this week. Okay, all right. So things from like Talk Boy to Tiger Handhelds, you know, those are two examples of things that when you see, it gets the mind ticking back. So we're going to do 90s. So okay. like, you know, awesome things like uh, Super Soakers. Remember the oh, big, the big yeah. Super yeah. Soaker squirt guns? You see, all these things, you're saying they're 90s, but I'm looking down at a list here. These are like out right now. Like current line, they like are, but they're popularized. Shit. You still see kids running around with super soakers. Do you see kids with oh, no. TMNT yeah, action figures? Not TMNT. Yeah. Oh, TM, the cool TMNT. Kids. They've just added them to Injustice Two. People love TMNT. They it's do, like, but do you see them walking around with the action figures like they did back in the right. days? I had every my son. Are action, fucking... figures, are action figures still a thing? Like, do people play yeah. with them? Yeah, I'd imagine. My son's right, three and a half, right? And at nursery, I was a kid dressed up as a turtle on Friday. People love it. People love the turtles. They it's not whether or not they still love it. It's whether or not when you see it, does it get your mind going back? Like when I see a TMNT action figure, I start thinking back to 
Saturday morning cartoons with Donatello, you know, at the beginning of the episode telling me not to do drugs. It didn't work. But, you know, it brings me back to being <laughs> excited about those kinds of things. <laughs> like, you know what was special about the 90s as far as, like, kids' toys and, like, that kind of stuff goes? Is that it was this perfect – it was the pinnacle of how high in technology they got before, like, the – you everything had to be, like, safe, safetified and, like – Yeah, right. Like, it had to have dull edges and it had to be colored orange so you didn't get shot in the tr- street by a cop. Like the, yeah. you had hit this pinnacle of like you know water guns that look like real fucking guns, and were electrically operated right before everything had to be colored orange and, uh, like you you couldn't have you couldn't have small weapons on your GI Joes in, in case kids will swallow them right it was like right. it was the peak right there mm-hmm. in the 90s, but on the same hand you also had girls dressed in sweaters wearing army pants so it was. Mm, it was always denim on denim denim tops denim trousers just denim everywhere there was a lot of denim in the 90s a lot of grunge too a lot of not washing Mm. (laughs) it's true you talk about unsafe toys i got this thing for christmas it was called uh creepy crawlers do you guys remember oh man yeah oh yeah there's a thing you threw against the wall and it just like slowly it could you could you could get a specific like sticky mixture for that kind of stuff but most of them were just like plastic like you make so for those who don't know what creepy crawlers is it's basically an easy bake oven for boys this thing got extremely oh, hot like 400 degrees and you have these metal aluminum molds where you pour in different colored dyes put them into the oven and after so long the uh, dye that you put in becomes a rubbery plastic and you have all these cool color little spiders and centipedes and stuff like that. The fact that I didn't burn down my house or singe a couple fingers off because those hot plates would get, it said around the box, would get up to like 500 degrees on it. <clears throat> you want to talk about like those unsafe toys. Yeah. Stuff like that. That was definitely one of them. Um, one remember- thing that I can, I can remember from the 90s that was awesome was fucking McDonald's Happy Meals that actually had a good prize in them. <laughs> that didn't happen very often. Uh, when I think Gary's. about the 90s. <laughs> Is that what that's from? That's so a McDonald's Happy Meal. So they it. give you a banana that you have to hit a button and it makes the top erect. Can you show me that mechanism real quick? I'm going to I'm gonna try to demo it while BC gives his point. Well, I'll just bring out one. Do you guys remember this game? <laughs> Perfection? Perfection, yeah, absolutely. This is this is the '90s. This is a big part of the '90s for me. Uh, I actually have had this game for years. I gave it to my daughters, and they love it. But who remembers uh, an old piece of technology that was hit for a while in the '90s and gradually uh, over? <laughs> the Fuck. Yobo. That was a spoiler there. We almost <laughs> made it through an episode, man. We almost. <laughs> Damn it. Who away. remembers a pa- who remembers pagers? Who had a pager? Oh, oh dude, I, I had, had a pager. One. I I hated it so much, Beastly, that I I went I wanted to sell it, and my best friend is like, "Oh, I'll buy it from you." I think having a pager is cool. I'm like, "Don't do it, man. This thing is terrible. It's a leash. It, you'll never feel free again. You'll constantly be looking for pay phones. This thing is the worst thing ever invented in the history of man." I gave it to him. Three months later, he sold it to another friend because he felt the same way. It's like that that haunted doll that you just pass off to the oh, next person. It's, huh? it's like that. Like fear inducing, you know, like gut wrenching text message you get when it just says, Call me. Whenever you get that text message, you think, Fuck, something's wrong. But that's every single message you ever get. No, but that's what I mean. A pager was that. Yeah. See, you're younger. So, you know, pagers, when you were coming up, you could actually put words in it. But but Briar remembers when all you could do is numbers. And so you had to like flip your pager upside down so you could. Read the fake word that the person would put in there, or yeah. did it, it would piss me off when people would just put nine one one on there, oh. and you're like, oh god, I'm driving. I just I gotta fucking pull over it now right. to find out. They had and like you a became, revolving. You also text you became like the social hub for all your friends because they always yep. knew you had the pager. You had the pager, so you were the person to get a hold of to make to make the plan for everybody. You became the social vector yep. for everybody. So everybody who didn't have a cell phone or didn't have a pager would call you from their house phone, get you to call them back and say, what's going on tonight? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, like Agent of the Nine in chat said, we used uh, text codes for words, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it was never, ever anything important. 
No. A friend of mine would text me at midnight and I'd call him. He'd be like, hey, what's up? Nothing. Did you, did you page me? Yeah, you want you want to you want to go smoke some weed? And it's like, it's of like, course really? I do, like, motherfucker. Of course, I do. <laughs> yeah, of course I do. Get over here. Call me next time. Don't. I have a hundred pages left this month, and you just ruined it. You just took one away that I'll never get back. There's no rollover. Like, oh man, <laughs> cell phones were such a fucking me. relief because I could just answer the phone or the text yeah. messaging it was so much better because you just have a conversation. But the the pager was such a fucking tether to always be near a phone, and then people would get mad. Hey, I paged you. How come you didn't page me? How come you didn't call me back? I was out. Yeah, well, that's why you got a pager, so you can call me. That's how. It... Oh, it was the worst. Pagers for me weren't as big as MSN Messenger. Like MSN Messenger was like that was the social, like way that people got in touch. Like everyone after school would come home, and there'd be like 150 people online on MSN Messenger having these chats that would just go on and on and on. It was like. When texting, you are young, across. man. It was AIM, yeah. AOL Instant Messenger, man. You get a, you get a message that says shit, ASL. Yeah. What's that stand for, Gary? <laughs> ASL. I, just think, I asked that sex frequently and location. on VR. <laughs> that's, 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 that's the message. But Beasley knows what I'm talking about. If he's cracking up that hard. The AOL Instant <laughs> Messenger days, man. That was it. You put ASL. Uh, you just and made me remember all that the, shit, Wilson. Uh, <laughs> based on the number that appears when you ask for that, you just send DTF question mark. Yeah. <laughs> oh there was only one one digit that mattered it was the age didn't care about sex the, didn't care about location the age we'll make the rest work digit. we can work <laughs> it sure out it's legal did you say the age has to be one digit i'm concerned at this point <laughs> 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 Who, who uh, did any of you guys get caught up in the, the next fad after pagers, which was like the next tell chirp phones that everybody? Oh, was, oh the next tell the big walkie talkie yeah. one. Next tell chirp, yeah, hundred yeah. percent, dude. My entire crew had those things for about <laughs> four months, dude. Before it just became so annoying. Like you'd yeah. be standing yeah. in, you'd be standing in McDonald's or whatever, and you'd, you'd hear, and you'd have no control over. It. My buddy'd just be like. Hey, I picked up that bag of weed that you wanted. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> Everyone at McDonald's just fucking heard it. You know what I mean? I'm like, I gotta get rid of this thing. Yeah, this is not good. This is not yeah, good. This is not good. <laughs> yeah, Leave a fucking voicemail, yeah. motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Page me next I time. <laughs> I remember the dark days as well of early mobile phones. Like, in fact, not even early mobile phones because that wasn't much more than a glorified pager. But early smartphones, when you had a phone that could actually look at a video, like actually yeah. have a video on the phone. Uh -huh. Some guy that came into our school, um, he had a smartphone, and it was like this weird flip-up clamshell. It looks like an, an original Nintendo DS, basically. That's what the phone looked my, like. My brother had one, yeah. And it had like a tiny screen. And it was made by like. Had I don't a keyboard know who. on there. Yeah, it was like some shitty Taiwanese or like South Korean, you know, niche manufacturer, and he'd spent like, I'm gonna say at least three to four days downloading this clip of pornography, and it was a woman who um, had somehow got an American football inside of her lady region, um, and he like this went around the whole school. It was Full like size? Yeah, like, American football or <laughs> European football. <laughs> that was the egg shell. difference. It was the egg-shaped one, <laughs> okay. and I still distinctly remember it was the first time I'd seen anything as sadistic and. and I gotta find and this video. Arousing as that, um, and I saw it on a mobile phone. That to me, but he ha he could only see the video about six times before he ran out of battery and had to charge it because it was <laughs> like it's really bad. Um, but yeah, I remember seeing that. It was the first video I ever saw on a mobile phone. Really? Damn. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Those early. Those early picture phones, like I knew right away, like, oh God, my behavior has got to change. <laughs> like, because <laughs> if there's gonna be fucking proof of what I've been doing for the last few years, like this is this is bad news. It's bad news. I do not want proof. Who saw the combination of those two things together? I th I think Joe Rogan said it best when he said, you know, who saw the invention of the telephone and said, a hundred years from now, you're going to watch people fuck on that. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> who in the world would have saw that coming? Like, <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, I just I, I, never I, I, understood where the, the dick pic came from. So before we go on to, to phones, like, what's the origin of that? Do you think that that predates phones? Do you think people used to do engravings of their cock and send it via mail? <laughs> yeah, I do actually. You could look at like uh, you could look at like uh, what was that? What's that city that was 
completely Pompeii. Pompeii. There's fucking dick pics all over the place in there. There's Amazing. dick graffiti everywhere in there. There's a lot of ancient cultures with <laughs> statues with huge dicks. Very big dicks phalluses. everywhere. Yeah. yeah. The dicks Egyptians, for days. The yeah. uh, the uh, uh, the Aztecs were big on it. Like everybody loved the dick. I think it was just the inevitable. <laughs> I, I think it was the inevitable evolution of man. I mean, obviously, everybody liked showing off their dick back then. You give yeah. someone the opportunity to take a picture and show the world. Yeah. Why not? I mean, we, we are draw it, it for thousands of years, but I mean, finally, we got the technology. Just, Speaking of the it's '90s, just it was the really, edge sketch dicks. Well, you draw I mean, them with the edge sketch. <laughs> let's take mobile phones out of the equation, though. I mean, if you just think about the fundamental thing of what it is, it's an odd thing to do. So, imagine you're courting a young lady. Um, and you're out for a meal and casually uh, just between the starter and the entree, you reach into your pocket and pick out a Polaroid of your penis yes. um, and you just casually pass it over to her and just be like, let me know if you've read that or not. And then just continue the conversation. It's, it's just a really odd thing that it's acceptable to do, I'd argue, by a mobile phone. <laughs> but I'd argue. I'm just saying, you know, something. It seems to happen frequently enough that it's it's something that happens. It, it, you'd it never used to phys- happen. Shit. You'd hand people a physical Polaroid of your penis in the fu- in the flesh. Just sit there and do it. You know what's well, hilarious is that if you have a if you have an iTunes account, an Apple phone, and an i Apple TV, the Apple TV has a screensaver that shows all of the pictures that you've taken with your phone. Oh <laughs> shit! Try and find out. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> I think that's funny. <laughs> I think that was done on purpose to fuck with people. Oh, I'm so sorry, Brian. I'm so sorry. You don't even have to tell the story. I'm sorry. Man. <laughs> Holy shit. I just think Did you guys a- look? I, I used to um to collect these. Do you guys remember the treasure trolls with the hair that go up? Oh, yes. Treasure Those would trolls. be so great now. You oh, can't trolls. fucking Email. find them anywhere. They're, they're nowhere to be found. Dude. You can't find... I Easily. used to collect them. Can I give them. you a hint? Yeah. Goodwill, um, Salvation Army, and when it becomes summertime, any local flea market. They're I everywhere. Haven't seen, I haven't seen one of those things in like 25 years. I used to, I used to fucking love my treasure trolls, man. Be a great also, emo. They yeah. used to have like, trolling, uh, the thing with the big, the things with the hair and stuff like that, <laughs> just one trolling. of their heads. They used to have stripper jewels on their belly buttons, didn't they? And they were yeah. like, new. yeah, they, they did. Yeah. Like, they look like some like really they raggedy ass strippers. They smelled strip amazing. Like, they like, smelled yeah. so good. The they had a very they, not strippers. The fucking <laughs> <laughs> no, but if you look at them, they do look like a really low rent stripper. Like you know, they had that sort of weird wavy hair, the little jewel on their belly. They were back ass naked. Yeah, glitter yeah. on them. Mm-hmm. And they, they smelled amazing. I did love they have those. butt cheeks, or did I imagine that? They do. They no, have they, no, they, oh, yeah. they 100%. They, percent. they have ass cheeks. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if they I'm had assholes, but, but they definitely had butt No cheeks. assholes. Just <laughs> I think they need to Google search. Do, do treasure trolls have assholes? Let's have a look. <laughs> you guys remember Tamagotchis and Gigapets? Uh-huh. Yep. The they just bought Nova that... one. Really? She bought, K- K- bought Nova, an old-school Tamagotchi. Yeah. Yeah. Those, Mine those died. Still... They can get care of it. Uh, I doubt it. She plays this... her PS4 once a month, so I mean, who knows where it's at at this point? She has her this own brings PS4? me. PTSD. Nova has her own PS4. Yeah. My fiance made us spend well the equivalent if it's American money eighty five dollars on a Tamagotchi about six months ago. I will 85? still never forgive her. You know, for her, the Tamagotchi was not enough. No, <laughs> not the Tamagotchi. The Tamagotchi P. Um, for those of you um, Westerners who are not familiar with the Tamagotchi P, in Japan they are still making Tamagotchis. And in fact, the Tamagotchi P is a full color 16 bit Tamagotchi, um, which is in full Japanese, which you then have to buy a second phone for, which has an infrared blaster, which you can download the English patch for and IR blast onto your Tamagotchi P. So, all told, this was about a $140 Tamagotchi, which is touched once. It's dead. Damn! <laughs> Tell us how you really feel about it. Do we need to get her in here? And Do we need to worry and, about uh, that cat, Gary? Uh, intervention? <laughs> I, I tell you, if there's junk on the internet, she's purchased it. Sounds like someone else I know. Yeah. Well, this like is this you two are fucking meant for each other. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like you two are hopelessly perfect. This is, this is kind of an obscure one. 
but it's something that I had years ago, and I'm sure that, Briar, you might remember. Who remembers the Pocket Station? It was like uh, Tamagotchi, but it was made by PlayStation, and it, it was a video memory unit, unit, and so it had had like three or four buttons on it, and it had a really Dreamcast small screen. had one of those. The Pocket Station oh. came out, I, I want to yeah. say the Pocket Station came out first. I remember um, that. Pocket Station. And it, yeah, and you could, Gary's going to go buy one right now. Uh but it was like a Tamagotchi, and you could play little games. And, and depending on the games that you actually had on your PS1, uh, you could download little sprite-based versions of those games and play it. It was yeah. really cool. I think I, it, I it that. came out in, I, the, in the late 90s. Yeah. It, it might have been the 2000, but I, I think when it was right there. When did right the PlayStation there, like launch? Was that the early 90s or late 90s? 96. 90, 96. It might have been earlier, actually. I think PlayStation was 94 95. and 64 was 96. Really? I thought the PS4, PS1 came out in 1995. Let me see. PS1 release date. Uh, kind of like how uh, the Jagmaster said. 94. Took, 94. took the words right out of my mouth. Um, that PlayStation thing you're talking about reminds me of the Dreamcast VMU. VMU, yeah. The virtual video, memory yeah. unit. Yeah. Yeah, the video that was a cool unit. idea. The Dreamcast was oh, The Dreamcast was cool. way ahead of its time, in my it opinion. It had so much cool stuff going on. It had, it had a built-in modem. You could hook up a mouse and keyboard to it. I remember playing Quake online on that. It was a Quake 3 Arena, actually. I think it was. It was Quake 3 Arena Probably. on the Dreamcast with a mouse and keyboard online. Oh, my Shit. God. Man, you, before yeah, people yeah. could call you a Zim abuser, you were doing it. That was it. <laughs> Back He's in the day. Zimming since been Zim. Uh, I used again. to use it. It was my computer, actually, for a while. It was, like, the only thing I had to access the internet. I had a built-in web browser, and I could go. I remember shopping. Yeah, you had to, to use the disc, right? eBay and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, you had to little, use the disc. Little blue disc. Oh, man, it was it was so. Ah, that was a great time. I got Marvel vs. Capcom 2 on that shit. That's all I needed in I life. I the little fishing rod you got with it as well to play, like, big big base, big bass fishing. Like, That's you got right. the little... little... I, my roommate yeah. bought that. What was the game with uh what was the boxing game with Afro Thunder? Uh Ready, Ready to, to Rumble. Rumble. That was the Gary. game that my love affair with Afros in, in video games began with. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, that Afro was the Thunder? one. That was when I really got exposed to uh how glorious an Afro could be in a video game. It it really can. You should you see Novus. Uh Gary, I don't know if you were ever big on the Dreamcast, but there was a game I think you would have liked. It was called Seaman. Uh and it was a oh, nice yeah. very- Special game. Uh, it, it, it it carved out its own niche. And to be clear, Gary, the PlayStation One launched in Japan in December of '94, and it launched in the United States in September of '95. So we were both right. You know who you know who narrated that game? Seaman. No. Leonard Nimoy. Oh God. Really? I need I, never... I, I need to put that in my, my Dreamcast now. Then <laughs> I'm pretty. I'm... I never played Seaman, but it definitely sounds like something that'd be right up my alley. It sounds like something that's very niche to my interest. It, it so, would. You should you should definitely check it out, man. Definitely. You guys want to out. talk about the nineties? Uh, Chucky Chucky e. Cheese. I don't know if you had those over there, Gary, or Showbiz mm-hmm. Pizza. Chuck e. Any of your heathen institutions? It's heathen all bad when you talk about it. You want you want heathen institution? Okay, first of all, we had animatronic animals, which were granted fucking creepy. All right, the inspiration had- for Five Nights at Freddy's. They had pizza. Yes. <laughs> they had beer for our parents because we were all bratty as fuck and drove in them all to drink when we were there. arcades everywhere. They had the ball pin with the slide, tons of arcades. And speaking of the ball pin, we used to hustle kids. We used to stop them at the slide and back one ticket, and some kids would hand us a ticket and go down the slide. And the kid, <laughs> If the kid didn't hand us a Always ticket, hustling. we didn't force him. We didn't force him. <laughs> But we would be like, oh, it's one ticket to go down the slide. And some kids would fork over a ticket. And we'd go up to the counter with, with our big hustle. Mm. You see, the, the it British... Make, it's starting to make sense now, Wilson. It's starting to make sense. <laughs> British teenage, you want to say teenage years, early, late childhood, pre-teen, teen years are pretty much characterized by the same way. Um, and that is you'd all gather in a park uh, and find a bench and then you drink incredibly strong cider until you all throw up, and then you go home. And that was pretty much every evening. That's not That's that all far off of how it was for me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there used to be a brand called White Lightning, um, which is, is, I think it's become Frosty Jacks now. Um, and that used to be, for a pint of it, it was around 45 pence, so that's about 60 cents for a pint of this cider. And you get it in packs of six, and it was about 10% proof um, on these, like, young, immature livers. Uh, and it would just be, like, complete massacres 
uh, and that would be it. And then if someone stole some pornography, you'd all sit around and look at that. Mm. And that was that was Friday. That was it. Do you remember so video it's, stores it's had like cider. the porn center in the back? Yeah, behind the red curtain, my dad would always go back there. Yeah, yeah. I remember <laughs> I'd always like they had the uh, the porno section and then they had like the horror movie section. And I'd always be like staring at the horror movies and some some guy would come in and go to the back and I'd be like trying to look around and <laughs> yeah. see if there was something you could see in there. Like like as if just just like porno is just spewing out of the door. It's like you're just waiting for it any minute. Like you're just going to see something <laughs> that you had no idea. <laughs> I do remember those. And yeah, I remember I just... the look, the shameful look on the people who'd go in there and they'd like, look around and then open the door and go back there or whatever. And I find it so weird that as well, pornography used to be a communal entertainment. Like now it's a very solitary thing, I would guess, for most people because you can access yeah. it so privately. But when I was like a teenager, someone would be like, oh, we found my dad's porn. And we'd be like, cool, let's all go around and watch it. We'd be like six guys just sitting there just watching it like. Man, she got a hairy ass mouth. Like that was it. Like just sitting there, like that would be. Imagine like... going to a theater. Mm. <laughs> it's just so weird. <laughs> Pee Wee Herman. Yeah, yeah, Pee Herman. It was just weird it. to have six guys sitting there just talking, <laughs> chatting. Someone's rolling weed, and they're just all sitting there just watching porn. Like just like it's just like the news. Just like yeah, that's that's on that's TV very, now. That's very strange to me. Uh, my my younger brother uh, years ago came over to my apartment and, you know, I'm there with my family. He got on my computer and he started looking at, you know, looking at a little bit of ass. And I was like, Dory, um, what, what are you doing? So I'm just watching some videos, man. I said, that's not a fucking video, man. <laughs> I'm not going to sit here and watch you watch porn fully clothed <laughs> at my goddamn computer. Some people are into that shit. Not me. No. Uh, be careful, Gary. I'm looking at some UK news at, and thank God you're out of that life now. But teen 16 dies in, in her sleep. After a fatal session with the cheapest booze on sale in the UK, which is Frosty Jacks. Frosty Jacks, I mentioned that's the new stuff. 7.5% alcohol by volume. It comes in a fucking two liter bottle. What yeah. the hell? Why is that even a thing? It's, it's we a used to get it all the time. Bottle. It's a big, it's like a big Coca Cola bottle. It's a two liter bottle. It's just, it's like a pound or like a dollar equivalent, and you just down it as quick as you can. You drink that in Lambrini. Lambrini is not wine. It's like paint stripper within a wine bottle. Um, and again, that's sold to uh, teenage girls to get them drunk and pliable. Um, that's pretty much all it's for. <laughs> Beasley, what were you drinking when you were underage? Uh, I used to drink let, the, the... Let he who the... cast the first stone. Or God damn. without sin, God. cast the first stone, because I bet... First of all, I wasn't, wouldn't I wasn't that shit with a fucking rusty fucking I, stolen dick. I, 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 I was <laughs> Listen... I didn't start. I didn't start drinking until I was 24, and I drank from the time oh. I was 24 until I was 29. So, ha, got you there. But I still drink. I drank some fucked up shit. I was I was old enough to do it, but I was I drinking whatever the shit was in that... my parents' liquor cabinet, which was usually nasty beer like Red Dog. Oh, Red oh, Dog. God. Yeah. I remember one time, a bunch of us decided we wanted to drink, so we all went to our parents' liquor cabinets and we filled up like sports bottles. With just a little bit off the top of each fucking bottle of booze. And then it was four of us who did that. And then we combined those four bottles into one bottle. So it was like a mix of probably 20 to 30 different types of fucking hard alcohol. All in this one fucking Jesus. sports bottle. It was a smart plan though, bro. <laughs> Needless to say, we all vomited that night. One of us yeah. actually so hard that he ripped the toilet paper hanger off of the wall. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, I had a buddy cool. who we were out of alcohol and he found his mom's margarita mix and beer bong the whole jug of margarita mix. Oh my. About 20 minutes later, violently threw up and almost went to the hospital because he had such bad heartburn from the margarita mix. Wow. Like it just burned, burned him on the way down. It was awful. There were some bad oh, liquor decisions growing up around me. Yes. There's a lot of fucking very cheap beer. I, I think mm. it, even at college, I was drinking like expired fucking uh, Hennessy summer ale. <laughs> I mean, the 90s was also the age where alcohol got marketed to children. Like, because before then, you didn't, and I don't know if you guys have them in the United States, but like WKD um, Alco Pops and like Bacardi Breezers, like these were things that mm. we have in the UK that are synonymous with like teenagers. But like yeah. a Bacardi Breezer is basically just like Fanta, it tastes like Fanta, looks like Fanta, but it's full of Bacardi. And they used to sell them in little bottles that look like Coke bottles. You get a pack of six of them and kids would just down them and then just like, they were invented in the 90s. Like Alco Pops didn't exist until like 
the nineties. That was every girl. Thing that every girl at college and in high school was drinking, uh, you know, wine breezers wine, or wine coolers, wine coolers, which are those like Seagrams and stuff like that, mm-hmm. or Boone's Farm. It was all mm. that stuff. It was like sweet. You could hardly taste the alcohol. Yeah, I think we should wrap so- this one up, guys. What do you think? Yeah, it was a good one, man. It was a fun one. There's a lot of nostalgia. A lot of nostalgia. Yeah, all the goodness. It was maybe next next week. (laughs) Mad Dog 2020. Please don't say that to me. Oh, I I was I was a Mad Dog 2020. Fucking Red Rooster. Next, right. next week, I feel like we should all bring one drink from our childhood or for our past. I think that's a great idea. Great idea. And drink it in honor of the show. Okay. Basically, you have to. You have to participate. It can be non-alcoholic. It she can be does. just something you remember. If you don't show up without a Zima, Beastly, I'm going to be sorely disappointed. <laughs> Zima's, that's the shit. They I, know, I, know, I know you think that. Budget cider in a two-liter bottle. <laughs> That's great. I'll see, I'll see if I can grab a Zima. I, can you even get it? Is yeah, like well, they sell, they remember they had them at Quick Trip. I, I I had some a few maybe two or three months ago. I bought a six pack from up there. Yeah, you that's, know, that's a leftover yeah. from the nineties. Speaking of nostalgia, probably, <laughs> probably. <laughs> All right, uh, Gary, you had an idea for revolver plays this week that I thought was pretty fucking brilliant. I did um so i feel like we are on the cutting edge of what's popular in gaming and you know anything that's a big game we need to get behind and, and show our expertise and all of us here are obviously league of legends professional level players uh, i think between us all we've probably logged a combined total of zero hours in league of legends am i not correct goose egg <laughs> we've got that so on tuesday um league i'm proposing that we is. all get together and uh, dip our feet into the competitive world of League of Legends and join the other 182 million monthly players that they have. And I think that we can make a big splash on that scene. Oh, I think we can. If we could get one win on the night, I would consider that a huge success. I mean, how do they? How will they uh, put? What kind of lobbies will they put us in? Will they put us with other new players? Or well, that's know, we'll have to figure out between that... now and then if we could just jump in, or if we have to like do some kind of training or something first. I know oh, okay. from my fiance, who as again, I've not had any interest in it. She is like a fanatical league player. She informs me that the uh, it's five players per side. Okay. So what's going to be even more interesting is that we are going to have a little blueberry with us who can probably play the game. Um, who? Oh, sweet. Is no doubt going to be, be incredible. Screaming at us the entire time. <laughs> hopefully, it's that. Hopefully, it's that guy we had in Sea of Thieves that one right? time. Oh my god, that guy was amazing. Never forget. Wow. Him. That's All a right, dream. What do you guys think? You think that's a good idea? I, think I hope it's as fun as Gwent, bro. Tell me you played Gwent in uh, The Witcher. Did yeah, you understand I that? Game? I didn't really dig it. Oh man, you got to play it, man. You nah, got to figure it out. I it's played so it. Fun. I didn't dig it. Fuck you, bro. Reminded him too much of magic. <laughs> Instantly started thinking of Holtzman. It was is so a bad bad experience. I mean, come to this game with hookers and swords to play fucking cards. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> play cards with a hooker holding a sword. Shit. <laughs> guys, Great it's show. been emotional. Guys. And if you didn't think we deserved it already, this is a callback to the very first thing that we asked you to do. And that is to head on over to the audio versions of this fine broadcast. Like it, subscribe, make a second account, subscribe, tell your mother to subscribe. Valentine's Day is coming up in two days. What better Valentine gift to give us all than a... Holy shit! (laughs) And a follow. It's in three days, but yeah, I gotta... I'm gonna... No, no, it's two days. I'm gonna be doing some some arts and crafts for for my my special lady. Wait, 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 wait. Valentine's Day is in two days? It's the 14th. Today's the 11th. It's the 14th. Shh. <laughs> Quiet. Just, 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 just reminded you, Willie. You're welcome. Appreciate it. <laughs> Easy. So, um, buy a bag of dicks for your Valentine, and then come and leave us a review and a follow. And your work here is done. You're doing God's work doing that. Praise God. Well, thank Absolutely. you guys for watching. We'll see you next week. Tuesday. Bye. <laughs>